All right, they're going to hear us, but it's okay. Um, cool. Okay. We're just going to go to comms really quick. Hello, stream. That needs a swap. They can't see you guys yet. Aw, oh, man. Aw, oh, man, soon. All right. Y'all ready? Yeah. Na, 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 na. Also, na, na. Since you're, if you want to eat, remember, you can put it up and it'll meet you. So. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Let's go in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back, everyone. We're here at Boston Blue Beat Offline Week. Um, not not weekly, monthly. <laughs> One of those two. You know what? Something on the calendar. I'm Laser Jishin. This is Toledo. We're here for some Undernight in Birth action. It's going to be a good time after uh, uh, kind of a long BBCF bracket. It's yeah. A good one, I, <laughs> it was funny. Um, God, I'm not going to lie. Conversating with that was weird. <laughs> it was like, for some reason, it was just a very goofy energy. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it a good amount. Lennox does bring that out sometimes. He does. He does. Like, I don't know what it was. This monthly, it like, I don't know what it was. He just reached into my soul and said, you're going to remember that you're a goofball. And yeah. I said, okay. We're, we're bringing out the silly. Basically. Yeah. He, he's had that effect on many a comic. <laughs> Trust me, yeah. So this set coming up here, if I recall correctly, is going to be Stranger versus Mr. B. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stranger on the Batista, Mr. B. Uh, Mr. Lucina Man finding Lucina inside the night as well within Orie. Uh, also TOing today, so you know, man of many hats. Very mm. impressive. Yeah, right now, solid uh, gem pressure here from uh, Stranger here. Caught, I think, on the ball here. And right now, back to full screen. Mr. B trying to dash block in order to get in, but has Celestia at least to play around with for a ton of uh, uh, meter if they want. And that was really quick, too. It's because Batista has a lot of hits in that gem pressure with lots and lots of hits. Um, so you can build up meter very quickly if you're shielding all of those. Wins the second cycle in a row and also opens up Stranger here. Really, really good opening here from Mr. B. Vorpal as well as 100 meters, fantastic for Orie. Manages the T2C. And in addition to that, you have the 25 meter refund as well to play with. Pops the CS there. Doesn't end up working out super well for them. Stranger finds, their, uh, finds a path out of the corner here. Going to set up the risk of hell so far. Goes for the Beedrill. Good block. Nice defense, very solid coming out of Mr. B here. Gem gets set, going for the back dash. No, gets caught. Active frames just enough. Finds the grid, not going to be enough though. Doesn't have CS, has the disco ball. Chain shift comes, and Mr. B gets <laughs> caught anyway. <laughs> that felt like a tragedy in like three parts. Yeah. Like you see the ball up, it's like, oh, okay, there's nothing. Like I'll assault, and then you watch the hitbox slowly reach. I got time. I don't got time. It's like I it's do not have time. <laughs> it is over. Oh, it's so over for that round at least. We got plenty more though. Here's oh, yeah, some of the sure. dash blocking you were talking about earlier. Ooh, no, just goes for the air into the summon, wins the cycle alongside it, has Celestial summon again, looking for a chain shift pretty soon to refill all of that gauge. 6B connects. This is going to be a solid confirm here. Not going to be a ton of damage, but again, well, actually, the 3.5 is pretty good. That's solid, this, yeah. Yeah, this no is going to be next to kills. CS available to continue the pressure. Ooh, that green shield could have gotten. Absolutely demolished with the throw. Sent back to full screen, but for Mr. B, this is fine. Orie's neutral is still fantastic yep. uh, in this version. It's really just a matter that like momentum is a lot higher. So you don't see it as much, but I think this is absolutely perfect for a position for Mr. B. Clips with the 4A here, but we're fine. Just kind of chilling out at mid screen. I love the decision to use the CS early for Stranger. He's low on life, but he does have a round up, so trying to optimize for the meter you can take into the next round, but instead just finds hits, just trying to go for the two rounds right now. Finds the toes. I think he might have enough. No, drops the combo. Beedrill gets CS, and a CDP ends up working out. Really good stuff for Mr. B here. And the resource management from both sides, kind of as you hinted at with Stranger, is looking quite good so far. Now that really got scrambly at the end there. Really dangerous because a, a confirm into like a, an infinite worth could have been the game for Stranger, but Mr. B making it happen so far. The Divine Thrust coming in can't convert off anything, but does buy him the cycle. CS is spent, trying to get the meter. And there's a couple of places where I'm noticing, like even when Mr. B has CS, that um, there's a couple of spots in which I just noticed Stranger opting for a green shield there. So if I'm Mr. B, great roll, by the way. Right. Uh, if I'm Mr. B, I might want to note like some of the green shield points and then look for like maybe a button into CS in order to throw and hard call it out. Uh, for the time being, though, I, I would say that Mr. B's neutral in offense has been looking pretty solid thus far. I also really, really love the matchup specific tech of relying really heavily on shield. He's getting so, so much grid from all of these full screen neutral interactions. Yeah, in addition, it, Mr. B really looks like he's not like forcing himself to aggress very heavily. That's a lot of force function usage there, but 
And it seems that uh, right now, these strangers are having a hard time even positioning themselves necessarily to go for perhaps like an A flash or something of the sort to try and amp here around there. Yeah, it's interesting to me because the Oria has a lot of horizontal movement capabilities with the Divine Thrust, right? Whereas the Batista with the dive kick, with some of these gem setups, you really want to go to the air so far, at least in this set. So it's a kind of a which tool set lines up with which situation better from a moment to moment basis. The time being back to neutral. 20 seconds left on the clock. Yes. I think Strangers are just going to look for the timeout at this point. Uh, yeah, that's a very valid way to go for this, especially when your opponent has Celestial like this. 10 seconds left. Are we still in clear? See summon. Things are looking fine thus far. Wow! I ADP ends up getting caught. I wonder if oh, ADP would have been high enough. Oh, no! The throw! That was so back and forth at the end there. He <sighs> found the way in. Got, I think it was a 2A, but couldn't, maybe a 2B, but couldn't confirm into anything, which opened up the opportunity for Stranger to close it out really, really close. I want to see what the adaptations are here. You mentioned the green shielding. Mm -hmm. That is definitely something you can try and play around, because it was represented enough that it might be an actual, actual pattern. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to see if Stranger has an answer to Mr. B just going way up in the air. Yeah, a lot of these, like, uh, jump into force function and then, like, uh, summon super has been working out pretty consistently for Mr. B. And even when it's not, like, a, a roaring success or what have you, like, Mr. B just kind of is like, all right, I'm back to neutral and yeah. we're just kind of hanging out and having a blast. And Aurea is perfectly happy in neutral most of the time. Like, Batista going full screen is a little rough for anybody, don't get me wrong. But Aurea has plenty of tools exactly like that with a Divine Thrust to try and get in. Now we got the corner pressure, even though Stranger is trying to fight out. Oh, Flash kick my is God. Not going to land, which means Mr. B puts around on the board, carrying over a full grip of 200 meters, too. Yeah, a hop, skip, and a jump, and we were just leaping well, uh, like right over the flask, uh, Flash Kick hitbox. Gee. Look at all the meter he gets from every one of these orbs that he blocks. He gets like a full grid block. Yeah, it feels like Stranger's having maybe a, like a hard time, not even necessarily cracking open um, Mr. B, because, you know, we'll see a couple of uh, Beatrice end up working out pretty successfully. But it feels like he's having a hard time maintaining momentum. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious to see how that might change. Disco Ball is out. Roll ends up getting called out. I like the uh, I like the decision to do nothing, let the ball do some of the work, and then yep. orient around your opponent's responses. Yeah, you get to be, I don't want to say lazy, you get to be reactive in a moment when a lot of other characters would be proactive. Yeah, I think that's a very good way of, uh, of describing it here. And grabs the Vorpal Cycle on the side of Mr. B. Chain Shift comes through. Can't find anything quite yet. Throw, getting something started. Ooh, can't Big get all the way climb. in. Yeah, wasn't quite in range for the meaty, which means going to the air, Stranger gets to take this to one away from taking the set. Things are looking good so far. Nice little counter hit for Mr. B here. This set, honestly, has been a lot of back and forths. I, I wouldn't say it's been a blowout in any sense of the word here. But Ooh. Mr. B just has to clutch and finish it up right now. A couple of A-normals here. Just poking at Batista. Doesn't really want to engage super heavily. What will you do against the child with Vorpal that is down backing? God only knows. Uh, honest Aurier mid-dispensing, not making it happen quite yet. You know, I'm not going to lie. It's funny you say that Mr. B is a 6B enjoyer. Mr. B is he a 6B has enthusiast. Not been, he has yeah. not been clicking 6B <laughs> like that. He got, like, one successful 6B in, like, game one. He's just kind of chilling out. Kinda yeah, th this man decides that uh, I'm a mix now, and you're going to have to hold that. Ooh, good anti-air. Not able to follow up, but that's still fine. A lot of shielding coming through here. I'm, I'm wondering if Batista might want to just go for a throw, try and get oh, something a little more tricky. Just concentrate, just concentrate, yep, just concentrate. Yep. Win that cycle. There it is. We saw a couple of these shields come out from Stranger, really just looking for the thrust. Uh, like We've seen it uh, work out pretty well for Mr. B. Hasn't been able to like fully convert uh, super heavily. Um, but I think looking for the shield there is a nice like check to say, like, hey, like I'm expecting you to do this. Flash kick yes. into the CS, down drill, sets up a diamond. Has the infinite worth to back it up? Is this dead, Toito? I not quite, actually. Oh, my goodness. And that IW damage is still, like, pretty good. But at this point, this could very well be a checkmate scenario. 20 seconds is a long time oh for my a God. timeout. That was devious. Yup. Shields are coming through. Bring out the Vorpal Cycle. Corner pressure is here. We're going to talk about that. Tw okay. That was a really good 2C. I want to, to talk a little bit about that moment right there around 20 seconds. Um... Oh, my goodness. So I think the decision to just kind of zone out is really good. Sure. And then the the C. You know what? We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna have to play. Th we, got, we got replay. We got replay. We got replay. We got replay. But um, honestly, I just thought it was a really good set of decisions from Stranger. Yeah, you, you guys don't see us on the camera here, but it's really just like, like a 30-second chef's kiss. I basically, I'm like, ah, I feel, dude. 
the brain was expanding in real time. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm straight out of Sicily. I'm like <laughs> shaking my hands half the time. I'm like, guys, this is happening. The thing with the thing with the thing, the thing and the thing. And I don't know. It's true. It's true. Anywho, you know what else is true? What That's else? a top eight qualifier. That we, is indeed we, we a top eight qualifier. Our whole top eight established. We got Fox up 24 and Carp up on the top side, along with two gigabit combo and Stranger. On the bottom, we're going to have Wooper going up against Galeo, and then that'll be Mr. B versus someone else. It's a little little off my screen right now. Let me see if I can yeah, do yeah, something yeah. about that. Yeah, Nyan Nyan. Not Nyan Nyan. Nyan. Uh, uh, not sure I pronounced that, but <laughs> something like that. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. N-I-A-N twice. I, yeah, it's either Nyan or Nyan, but then I feel like I'm straight out. I feel like I, I Look, time traveled to 2000. 2010 internet was a real time. Yeah, it was a time. What if it was a time? all of these monthlies we have going on. Next one is going to be on April 13th. If you're in the New England area, like anime games, maybe some Uni, maybe a little bit of Blaze Blue, a little bit of Strive, a little bit of Grand Blue. It's a good time every time. So make sure you come on down. That's April 13th. Yeah. And then additionally, if you guys are interested in playing Undernight or some of the other games that Boston Blue Beat uh, hosts, we have our Burst Limit series. So on Mondays, we have Blaze Blue at 8 p.m. On Tuesdays, we have Plus R at 8 p.m. And on Undernight on Wednesdays, shocker, it is indeed at 8 p.m. If there's one thing we like is consistency. We are we definitely got, we got monthlies. We got every week for online games. We also got, not consistently every year, though, mm -hmm. Crossover Arc coming up in New York. Dude. Oh, my God. Crossover Arc is going to be very insane. For those that are not in the know, Crossover Arc is going to be a huge uh, French Red tournament that is going to uh, – that is uh, popping off next weekend. That's going to be March 23rd March 24th. Um, if you guys are interested in uni in any capacity, it you is gotta a, get there. It is a it is a must watch. If you can attend, you, got folks you flying must from attend. Japan to come in for this tournament. We got we like they got Clear Lamp, they got Red Blade, Pinku, several of the people that you're gonna see here today. Probably all. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to a bunch of the uni players earlier, um, and the timing for this month is actually very convenient because this is sort of the like training ground moment yeah. for it. It's sort of like that last minute, like okay, like. Let's get the grind session in. Let's like work out some of the kinks. One last tune-up. Basically, yeah. So I, I find it to be kind of interesting as a, not even necessarily for like the greater scope stories necessarily, but as that sort of like, hey, here's the last like litmus point that we have to kind of like see how things have like shifted, even in the span of only a week. Especially as crossover is going to be like the second big tournament this game actually has. The first one was like a week after the game dropped. Dude, Frosty, Frosty's was a killing game time. You know what's going to be a killing game time in this match right here? We got Carp going up against Fox of 24, two of the biggest names in the game in North America. Carp on the Yuzu, Fox of just running the scene the last like month on the Laundrakia. Oh my goodness, he's already using Rekka. Good heavens. A couple of J3B, he's J3Bs here. And you're going to see that moment of air, that like JC into the J3B. Uh, if Landrekia times it properly, he can make himself at about, like, plus two. Mm -hmm. um, so you see the green shield coming out from Carp. It didn't work out successfully, but that is a way to at least, like, you know, make him minus. Landrekia in this version, I don't know if you guys have seen the Twitter clips. This character is kind of juiced. <laughs> yeah, this character. And it's not just that Landrekia is juiced, but also Fox of meshes so well with this character. Like, you can, you can see the way he plays. He plays super confidently. Flying all over the place with these ice skating Rekkas. Now Yuzu trying to get the neutral in their favor. Finds the hit with the 2-3x combo. Invalid. You know what? Fox up. It's okay. It's okay. We've only been playing a couple games today. So when we up for JC, yes indeed. That may look like an insane option, but rest assured, it is an extremely potent low crush and leads into plus frames with the J3B tech we discussed earlier. Fox of absolutely mauling Carp right here in the corner. This is going to lead into, I, oh, not another freeze, but this is fine. You just walk right up, Rekka. Like I said, this man's confident. This man vibes with this character. Wake up, Rekka, on the meaty. <sighs> Closes out the first game. Quick 2-0. Like, it, this game is a killing game, don't get me wrong, but that was still a speed run. See, the worst part about it is that, like, so Fox of is the prototypical example of, like, the nicest person you know playing, such a like, a yeah. the, like, sweetest guy playing, like, uh, a scummy character or, like, just doing, like, heinous actions. So you'll, like, look at him, like, do a thing, and he's just grinning ear to ear, and yep, I'm like, yep. I'm mad, but, uh, like, I just gotta let this be. And IW to extend some of the damage here. Look at this. Nearly 6k. Next hit can certainly kill 100 meter to play around with. A couple of shimmies here looking for a throw. There it is from Carp again. JC connects here. Let's see if uh, Fox of can form the right combo to get the kill here. 
He's still got the meter to go behind it. I got the chain shift first to make sure it is optimal meter usage. Spend the meter while you're saving the meter. Get yourself into a one game away situation to get into winner's finals. Like, I carp's no slouch. Carp's a strong player. He is. Oh my god, that's the first ice rain I've seen. We're going to see a lot more of that on stream, but rest assured as, uh, as Fox is, uh, continues on here. Right now, Flower is set up. It's time to guess. Veiloff actually succeeds. I was curious to see if Fox would uh, backdash there last second, but things are looking solid. And this is Carp's chance to start stealing back some momentum. But look at the cycle here. Quick concentrate to try to get it back, but a shield from Fox of works out super well. Big trade here, actually, on the 2 3 succeed. Yeah, and Fox was perfectly happy to play that extremely patiently, right? Yuzu, obviously, the, one of the zoners of the game, has to play neutral in a very deliberate, very uh, methodical fashion. Landrakia, definitely a little more of a balanced character, likes to be in your face just as much as likes to be at the mid range, but. Perfectly happy to say, you know what, while your VO is going, I'm just going to stay at mid-range, fire up my projectiles. If you catch me, we're going to trade, and all of that patience buys him the opportunity to run this pressure in the corner yet again. Throw coming out here successfully. Carp managing to battle his way out. 40 seconds left on the clock. I doubt that we're going to see a timeout. Big trade here. If another one goes like that, it is certainly going to win. Uh, be the win for Foxo here. Carp has to play this really carefully, especially with Foxo's willingness to just wreck it across the screen to cover a ton of space. Yeah, especially when you have all this, this life lead, but, you know, this combo notwithstanding, throwing yourself across the screen is just fine. The combo drop into God. the round loss, into the set loss. The absolute classic. You hate to see it, unless, of course, you're Foxo. Go Going into winners finals off the back of that match. Yeah, if I'm Fox, I'm happy to mash. You know what? <laughs> I'm happy to mash. Look, if, if you're going to give me the game, I'm, sure I'm going to take it. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, on top of that, right? Like, it is a unique sort of pressure when you are playing for the end of the set and you have a very large deficit right. against a character that is able to flex a lot of potent defensive options, right? Um, even just based off of, like, the basic RPS of. Uh, will Andrekia try to reversal with his force function? Okay, I'll throw that, but crap, then he's just going to up forward JC, and then I'm going to get smoked for this. And then wait, you're just going to mash instead? So many things that pile on that make it a very difficult choice to make there. Especially when you're mid-screen and Landrakia's reversal is omnidirectional, so they can just press 2-2-X, and then you have to figure out what side you're falling down on. Uh, it matters a lot more than you're, when you're in the corner. A lot, uh, lot to work with there, and Fox, though, worked with everything he had. Mm -hmm. Took a very convincing 2 over Carp, which is not an easy feat. Yeah, I, I would say, honestly, really good play uh, from both players here. Uh, I believe, let's see who we got coming up next on our set. I think two gig and Stranger. Oh, boy. All right. This is, all right. We're going <sighs> to, we're going to be Carmine and Tista. Oh, God. Yeah, these, these two characters are uh, egregious, as many <laughs> characters in this game are, which is why this game is so sick. Because characters are a lot stronger, the, the, yeah. The power level in this game has really rocketed through the roof, which is, um, in my opinion, in my, my strive-rotted brain, mm -hmm. a lot of fun. It, it means some, some wonky things, some disgusting, like horrible things like you were talking about can absolutely happen. Carmine, one of the characters that thrives the most in a situation where they get to run their despicable things. Yeah. Um, and if you guys have, um, if you guys have maybe caught some of the occasional streams from locals, uh, two gig has been uh, popping in pretty consistently. I would yep. say uh, yep. it's been nice to see him around, either playing with new players or like answering a few questions. So it's been pretty dope to see. Yeah, I was actually um, talking to him a little bit earlier about some tech that I didn't understand. And this is one of the, my favorite parts about the Uni scene. They want people to play Uni. Yes, like, they, I they, think they want to talk about Uni. They want to answer your questions. They want to bring you in. Yeah, I think, and it is the accessibility of a lot of the strongest members of the scene that Excellent is very report. unique for Undernight and has served the community, I would say, overall quite well. Yeah, in the last week, I have talked to Foxov, Masoma, and now Two Gigabit, just about something I didn't understand about their character, and they each gave me college-length <laughs> essays. <laughs> you will get essays. With yeah. as much context they could possibly offer, so I fully understood everything they were talking about. Yeah. I was like, hey, what are the mechanics behind this one fuzzy setup for Carmine? Mm -hmm. And two gigs like, all right, here's how it works. Here's the counterplay. Here's like the frame data that makes the mechanics of it work. And like, I understood like about 80% of it. Yeah. I don't remember maybe 40% of it when I'm done, but now I got something to go back on. It's, oh, it's really, really great that the scene wants the scene to do that. Yeah, and I'd say New England is still like full of that as well. Literally last night, I remember I was really bored. I was like having some random routing uh, in Blazewood right next to me. I was watching uh, Mr. B and then two gigabyte combo go over like a Kotsky J8C, yeah. like the axe kick. And they yeah. were just like talking about it at length. 
the dissemination of information in the uni scene I think is quite good uh, and resources like Mizumi and like other you know other various you know information repositories have been a lot better in general the the uni discord community or yeah. community Dis discord server is mm -hmm. fantastic they all a lot of uh, channels for each character that just want to talk about their character because they think it's really cool. Yeah, it's great. This game's going to be great too. Two gig. Uh, someone we've seen, like you were just saying, all the time. Been grinding on that car mine. Been uh, really showing up. Uh, Stranger, again, someone who we see very, very frequently. The uh, fact that they were just in the last game, notwithstanding, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> some availability <laughs> bias. You know, you know how they're it is. Right, they're right, they're right, yeah. yeah. But uh, if you guys have caught some of the Burst Limit series and like some other online brackets, you might have seen like even like Defiant pop on like Carmine yep. here yep. and there. Uh, Carmine, one of the stronger characters in this version of the game, the community is seeming to agree upon. Mm -hmm. Batista also classically very very strong, just a little bit of execution barrier behind it. Yeah, de definitely a specialist character. Yes. Uh, here we go. Looking like it is uh, in match. This is not a button check. All right, here we go. Got yeah. one puddle set down. Carmine getting the axe feel, getting the corner carry. Something that's really, really important for Carmine is being able to get all the way into the corner because your main game plan revolves around setting those puddles with those bombs oh and getting do it again, pop. do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Another, another, another. Yeah. Oh. You know he listened. We'll if, give he, that. if he command grabbed, I would have laughed my eyes <laughs> <laughs> off. He command grabbed. I would have been like, real. <laughs> right, here we go. Stranger in the driver's seat. Uh, yeah. Yep, EX wheel coming through for. Two gigabit taking that first round for some power of that Carmine setup in the corner. You can do a lot of things there, going for throw over and over. Like, kind of puts the fear of God in your opponent. Like this man, this man's willing to do that. It is one of the. It's a very funny moment when like I think it's a very good example of mental stack where yes. you're like, oh okay, like cool. Um, Carmine has all these crazy fuzzy options. Damn, I got to deal with this. Th uh, okay, I got throw. Okay, whatever. Throw is kind of reactable. Like, you know, oh, well the fuzzy option is probably gonna go and I got and again and damn. Yeah. I've been thrown four times. Especially when a uh, UD is such an OS heavy game mm -hmm. and you're uh, very, very active on defense in some occasions. Carmine's setup is not uh, unique in that it's not an OS -able situation for some of the options that you represent. Mm -hmm. But then if you just are trying to outplay yourself, get thrown, it hurts. And here we go. This combo hurts a lot too. Getting a cool 4K after a little bit of meter. Set down two of these bombs. Charge up on the, me on the cycle that is. Bomb pop one. Hold the other, bomb pop two, set another one, bomb pop three, change shift comes through. Oh, you really don't want uh, Stranger to play, huh? I understand the vibes. The 6-2-3-C there to me was absolutely bull. There was that, it was that type of thing where it's like, stop. <laughs> no, these frames are mine. What, what, do, you, what mine. are you doing? I, I am the captain here, basically. We don't share here. Oh my God, finally getting stuffed here. Things are looking decent for Stranger at the very least. You really want to rock some of that momentum. Thus far, it's been a bit of the Carmine show in the corner. I yeah, couldn't find the Oki there that Batista is so well known for, but does find the counter hit of the neutral EX laser coming through. Now we're going full screen. Things are looking fine here. 66C into, F, uh, into FF. Things are looking fine. Gem is set. That's a couple of plus frames here. Ooh, Ooh the dive kick, the drill coming through, mixing up the options. We get a knockdown here with the disco ball. Oh and my. he just presses out. It's not only the fact that he presses that he stood, he like down back for like two seconds. Of, yeah, I round out. This has been long enough. I, I think I, I think I'd rather be somewhere else. Basically, good it's, flash kick here. Yep. A little bit more damage is all that they will need. But two gigabit not going down easy. Cannot kill himself with the self damage, so he does have at least one more hit to get through. Has all of this meter set down the chrysalis, set down the bombs. I'm afraid here right he now. Might not be able to actually guarantee cycle due to the shields there from uh, Stranger. But the bait on the flash kick, things are looking very nice. Confirms the kill, and that is fantastic for two gigabyte here. His health bar was that one. Man, I, no health. Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. And because like I'm looking at the cycle, I'm like, oh okay, like maybe Stranger just plays for like you know CS in the flash kick or something like that. But <laughs> really good stuff. Um, I'm right, playing Dragon Ball for a sec. Uh, basically. Knocks that gem out of the air. Full screen for Batista. Dashing in behind the slow bomb, but the reversal for two gigabit does buy him back control of this mid screen. Also buys him the vorpal cycle. Now gets to run in, has the corner pressure. I'm seeing a little bit of shielding coming up, but it hasn't been an extremely prominent uh, thing the way we saw with Mr. B in the last game that we saw Stranger in. Mm -hmm. Pops Ooh, a 623. All right, this could be really big for Stranger here. Gets the throw tech and cross all through. 
Lots of meter spent, but there's so much to play around with now. 200 meter is pretty great for Vatista. You still get to threaten the EX laser as well as Disco Ball for whatever knockdown you choose for. Let's see how Stranger opts for it. Goes for the EX Ball, but trades. Trades again. These two are swinging. Laser comes through. Trying to play patient here. Oh, I was looking for a reversal, but didn't find it. Celestial goes, or Vorpal rather, goes back to Stranger in control of this cycle so often this game spends the chain shift immediately, which means two games looking at the winner of the next cycle. Already has all the meter to back it up as well. Stranger can't afford to give up too much more space, so they're having to aggress here. You can see the shift in the uh, in the momentum based on the way that uh, two gigabyte opted to stand their ground rather than try to aggress. They really wanted Stranger to come to them here. Walks back, the throw ends up whiffing. Grid break here, things could go from bad to worse, but there's 10 seconds left on the clock. And it's not even a matter of necessarily opening up Stranger on time. Doesn't even end up being a factor. The laser will get it done. Meter very much in favor of two gigabyte, but you gain meter very, very quickly in this version of the game. It is not necessarily the deciding factor that it could have been in the past. Bigger orb coming through, trying to get the aerial approach. Oh my god, just neatly stuffed that area. Yeah. 623X ends up connecting. And two gigabyte trying to play around at this mid-range, really looking for whiff punish, but it's going to be the ever-loving spinning wheel that gets it done here. Things are looking Ooh, good. VO? Let's see what Stranger opts for here, actually. I'm very curious. I wonder if that was like meant to particularly like maybe Vorpal Strip or something. Yeah, has the IW behind this, I believe, will be enough. It was a solid starter. I don't know Not how quite. scaled it was. Oh my, that was, okay, that was a lot closer than I thought it would be. I'm that, not that's lie. a Carmine slipper I, right there. I said that so confidently, I didn't think it was going to be that close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We saw 2 gig do this already in the set, though. No, Stranger stuffs out the run-up with the orb. We're at one apiece. Yeah, so it's been a, I believe that's 2B, if I remember off the top of my head. Uh, so Stranger's been really playing around at that range in particular to look for the 2Bs. So we've seen a lot of um, 2 gigabytes options get stuffed out at that range. Whereas prior, we saw two, uh, 2 gigabyte able to run up with like 5BB, the swipes there. Uh, so I'm just curious to see like the other adjustments as to the range. Good oh, God. That, that pool pop is such a strong option. Covers so much of the screen, just like you said. So the Vitsa thought they were safe. Stranger trying to go to the air once again, but no. Command grab comes through, set up one puddle. Ooh, the second one pops. Throw whiffs. All right, this is a good opportunity for Stranger to get to mid screen at the very least. Oh, side, side switch. Even better. This set is great. Disco ball. Daring an option out of uh, two gigabyte here. But catches, I think, either the jump animation right there with the 63C. I really like the willingness of two gigabyte to hold on to CS. Right. One of the things that's really important about Chain Shift when you're at higher levels of play is its use as an implicit threat. The ability to say, hey, I could just see us at any party here. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? And then you dash up and do something. Especially when someone's willing to burst. Oh, finds the counter hit. I think this should be enough damage with the meter expenditure. Doesn't even need it. Carries it over fully with 200 to spare. Set point now here for 2 gigabyte. Drops the pull it up full screen. 5-8 counter hitting. Actually, quite surprising here. Yeah, he was not ready to convert that. So, Stranger taking the turn instead. Disco Ball comes down along with the diamond sets. Couldn't keep the pressure going, though. This is what you were kind of talking about with the Mr. B set. They're good at getting opportunities, but they don't keep them as long as they potentially could. Did a good job of taking Carmine down to 50, 45% now. 2Gig trying to find a way to fight back with the invincibility. Dang, tried to get out of range of that 623C, but trust me, when that portal is underneath, it's just massive, I won't lie. This could potentially lead to a kill. Let's see if EX Laser, oh, okay, double super here. Excellent job there from Stranger on the routing. And with the meter refund, 50 to go still. Yeah, we'll take that, absolutely. Now we're on a final match between these two. Set point for both, text that throw. Orb's coming back, bringing them to fuller screens, but the counter hit on the blood toss means that this is corner pressure now for 2Gig. 63 ends up whiffing, this is fine. Crystals are out. This is looking great. If 2Gigabyte uh, if gets this right, this will he'll try to make this look like a repeat of game one. And this is a one-touch situation. You can go for a CBO, try and get the infinite worth, but the th run up throw to reverse the situation. Gets the ball. Back to full screen, Stranger trying to establish something. But right now, the toss right there to set the puddle at full screen has been arguably one of the banes of Stranger's like neutral presence so far. The ability to threaten that like 623A at range and then prop it, uh, proc it, or just go for a simple bomb here. 
Chain shift comes through for Stranger. 200 meters, absolutely enough to kill if you find the hit, but not quite. Trying to stay out of range of the potential puddle representation. Disco Ball comes through so that you can hide your approach. Throw his text, CS comes through. And that bold stare down is crazy. I really do feel that like Stranger was just looking for the CS to come out for free. But due to the way that 2 Gigabyte held onto it, we find ourselves in this situation where an IW will get her done. Yeah, that's gonna be two one for two gigabit combo going into winners finals to take on Fox Up 24 in a, a really close back and forth set. I really like the way you uh, pointed out that that spacing game the two of them were playing was so important, especially when they were getting like a third of the way toward the corner where Vatista was wanting to get the space trying to play that distance game. But when you do and you end up giving up too much space, like we've seen this replay here, two gigabit being able to run this corner pressure, if they were able to take advantage of the fact that you were willing to give that space up, is really dangerous. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, overall, very fun set to watch from both players. Um, one of my, I always love watching sets in which like, you think it might be a steamroll, but then suddenly it ends up being a bit more of a nail biter in the yeah. end there. So I do want to put out a lot of shout outs to Stranger there. Uh, they are down, but not most certainly not out. We still got a ton of losers. Uh, we still have a ton of games in the loser side of the bracket uh, over here. Uh, for example, no, that's okay. There are plenty of people already out of the bracket. We got plenty of losers. Too. <laughs> you, you can say it. You can say. We're, we're, we're we're but these people are in the bracket. These people are in the bracket. These people are in the bracket. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, chef's kiss. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> so, uh, I believe so. Yeah, we got Wooper and uh, Galeo. Galeo. Galeo Leon. Yeah, Galeo. Uh, Fox Up Twenty Four's prior Forty Two's prodigy. Really? Uh, this is someone who has basically learned the game through Fox Up. Okay. Also plays Landrakia. Basically, just is um, Fox Up again. Plays the same style. Like if you, if you learn from the best, you're gonna learn to play the best, right? Yeah. It, there's no reason not to emulate. It's the sincerest form of flattery. Wooper, one of the WASD crew, uh, is a Wagner player. Mm -hmm. uh, last month, I believe, went down to Red Blade in a uh, in a Wooper mirror, Wagner mirror. <laughs> Uh, now just imagine like a Quagsire <laughs> stare down. Uh, that is uh. that is uh, that is probably stall on the OU ladder. Yeah, that is, that is not the greatest time. Pokemon Showdown is a time. Oh, Man, goodness. there's a time during the pandemic where I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get into competitive Pokemon. Then I watched a lot of Showdown, and then like three months later, I came out of my cave and was like, I don't think that's gonna happen. It's man. not for me. It's, it's not like, for me. <laughs> there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things you gotta memorize. Yeah, the, the speed tears. It is. It is not easy. Um. One thing that I think uh, Pokemon is surprisingly relevant for in terms of fighting games is the the stories regarding prediction as well as game state. Yep. I think those things are actually very, very interesting concepts. Uni, um, in particular, due to such a heavy system focus, has a lot of different game states that you can reliably look for, check, uh, and play safely around. So, for example, like we, we brought it up earlier, the presence of CS, whether for the attacker or for the defender, in various situations. How you want to play around it, do you want to play it safe, do you want to burn this resource, do you want to show your hand, um, as well as just the nature of like OS callouts, mm -hmm. uh, so on and so forth. You know, there are the great on top of all of that. Right. Uh, and you know, some option selects are a little weaker in this version of the game. I know that 3CAD got patched, yep. uh, if I remember correctly, so that's a little bit better now. Um, but you know, like 1AD, for example, and other things that like force a bit more commitments. So it's always interesting to see the ways in which uh, people hard call out options. Because I think uh, player behavior, when you've really watched people for a long period of time, when you're on the outside looking, you're like, what is going on here? But when you're in the thick of it, you're like, ah, oh, yes, I understand why you're on later th uh, 37.64. Okay, yeah. this is why you have done this your, option. Your, your pattern recognition really kicks in. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting to watch which axes of the pattern recognition different players want to lean into. Mm -hmm. uh, like for me, because I'm, I'm relatively new to the game, I, I choose to kind of ignore the grid axis because I don't know the mechanics well enough to be able to make real-time decisions when I'm mm -hmm. in the game to optimize around that part of the pattern. Sure. But I can carry over my knowledge from other games to optimize around things like screen positioning, life leads, you know, timing, things like that, meter, uh, meter that's not bound to the grid. And the thing I think is really impressive watching high-level uni is these, these people are playing around all of them. Yeah. And it's so great to watch. And I think if there's one character that actually does uh, exemplify some of these foundational aspects of fighting games, it is certainly Wagner. I agree. Uh, this matchup has uh, seen a lot of complaints on the Wagner side of things, to put it lightly. Um, 
I have gotten smoked by Fox if I play Wagner. Uh, but part of that is because I'm not uh, super good at this game. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, Lundrake has got a lot of things and a lot of, uh, a lot of spacings he can maintain that can make it an absolute pain for uh, Wagner here. Plus runs with the 2-3-6-C right now. CS is available for Wagner. Let's see how it gets played out here. I like that. I think that was looking for a CS bait that we were talking about earlier where you can have the threat of the CS act the same as an actual reversal. Doesn't matter. In this case, just one touch away for Foxlove after all of his corner pressure been really, really unrelenting. Yeah, Ooh, the good DB here. was baited. 6B. Ay, 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 ay. 2 3 6 e. All right. Going to go for the plus runs with the T2C, c but Galeo ends up going for the force function to end north and end it here. Things are looking solid thus far. 2 3 6 a round start. Okay, you want to perform actions. Great cancel into force function. Oh my god. I, instant ice rain. Actions are happening. We oh. are playing game states. We are progressing the board. We are putting you in the corner with the Rekka that has such immense corner I carry. feel like the table is getting thrown every other interaction here. CS6 speed <laughs> to look for the back catch. All right, this is solid. You can go straight to the corner here. All right, doesn't go for the uh, double buff route, but this is fine. Uh, okay, ends with the drill here. Not as ideal uh, in terms of like your enders here, but this is fine. Okay, with green shield and uh, ends up going for the ice ring here. ADP, no, goes for B, this is fine. Yep, maintaining corner pressure this entire time. The positioning is uh, contested now. Ooh, the counter hit on the sweep. I the one install. That was a, the sweep of all time. All right, good shield here on the end of the record. That makes it a uh, minus four. I'm surprised that they ended up uh, Going for a hit. I wonder if uh, Galeo ended up trying to press something else afterwards. Yeah, two, three, six, or six, two, three, C closing out the round there. He's where one a piece. Good break oh with the assault. God. Baits out the reversal as well. This is everything you could want to start off a final oh round. Oh no! They wanted the staircase. That's supposed to be ICJC, but they didn't quite get it there. All right, things are looking fine here. You could opt for a double buff. No, a drop on. I think of the six, six C perhaps. Things are looking a little awkward here, but. BDP comes out, side swap, my we friend. We are swinging in this final round, throwing around everything we got to take this to the next game. Wooper. Jesus. That was a slug fest at the <laughs> end there. They were, they were, I saw DPs, I saw meter, I, I mean, saw yeah, that, was, that was a slug fest at the beginning. These guys are hitting buttons. Jesus Christ. With green shields are really great for Wagner. Uh, if you're playing Wagner, you look for with green shields like a hound. Uh, it's really great for making yourself extremely plus. You get to take up uh, extra space. And in this matchup in particular, you really want to be, uh, you do not want to be like at tip uh, Lundrakia 5 dB range. Right. That is an annoying spacing to like uh, to deal with there. So being able to aggress on your opponent's defensive options is important. Seeing a lot of Abare uh, decisions come out uh, here from Galeo. ADP Ooh. into 236C, it is, that is still around. We've seen it since the days of uh, ST before that thing got nerfed. Two and four A, Jesus. Chase up for the OTG means Wooper is one away. A lot of meter here for Galeo, but we're only w a one hit away just like that for Wooper to find the meter of their own. Gets the one install, gets that corner pressure. Staggers coming through, is challenged. Ice Rain comes down for the side swap, and we're just switching sides again. I am going to get out of my seat looking at all of this insanity. 3C ends up coming out expecting the assault from uh, Wooper, which makes sense. Uh, uh, Wooper, especially for mid-screen, has been opting for a lot of assault uh, JC in order to like look for some spacings. Going to force function there. Nice CS in order to check for uh, what's happening on the screen. Should be able to side swap here. Let's see if Wooper opts for it. Could also go for a large uh, corner carry here. This is looking fine. Yeah, very stable route. We saw it before where it might not be the most optimal ender in the world, but it definitely gives you corner pressure. You can use the meter like that for the installs. Chain shift comes through. Meter comes back in response. Now we reverse the situation. We got those long Lundrakia buttons just like that. Go for a shimmy. Doesn't find it, but does find it on the second shimmy. Has almost 200 meter. I don't think we're going to build it up. King of the EX instead. Uh, looking for the concentrate, but no. Decides to give the chain Oh shift. my god. He tried to play around the range of like a DP by backing off a little bit, but ADP still ended up catching and le uh, leading to a full combo. That could have potentially killed. I Was that a TRM there? I actually, I can't tell if I saw the red. I, I don't think it was. I think, I think that was oh. just a well-timed tick for him. Not positive, but I, I believe it was not a TRM. That means Wooper will take it into uh, loser's semis? Uh, loser's, know, quarters. loser's quarters. Loser's yes. quarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
going up against someone. We have a window in the way. But uh, <laughs> really, really cool match between these two. We can see him here in these replays that I think it was really just about the turn taking between these two. Mm. They were very, very proactive on defense on both sides between chain shift and reversals and just dashing under things like assaults and aerial just jump in buttons. Mm -hmm. We saw side switching happen all the time, which is really, really important for these two characters because they have such crazy both corner pressure and corner carry. So mm -hmm. being able to get the positioning that you want is really vital in this matchup, I think. So for sure, it's really fun to watch the way those two wanted to play the positioning game through active defense. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Uh, and we're coming into our next hit here. So this is going to be Mr. B versus uh, Neon Neon. I think, yeah, Mr. B just uh, arrived to the setup. Yep. Um, I am unfamiliar with uh, Neon Neon, but I do know that uh, I mean, we've seen Mr. B earlier. Uh, New England player, uh, whether it's TOing, whether it's uh, Uni or other games like Smash, uh, you'll see Mr. B out on the scene here. Uh, Mr. Top Eighter at a Genesis in the <laughs> Uni bracket over there. Um, so yeah, we'll be seeing the Aurier, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with Neon Neon. I, I am not. We'll find out soon. Sure. Uh, I'm looking forward to being familiar with them after this. Yeah. You know what else I'm looking forward to being familiar with? Our What's online up? Burst Limit series. Oh, amazing. Tell me about it. So it's uh, actually pretty cool. We're on a 10-week series where at the end we have an invitational for the top eight placements or placers throughout the 10-week series. And if you win that last invitational after week 10, we're going to fly you out to our <laughs> regional later this year. Yes. Each episode. You guys. All expenses paid. Just come th and the best part about come, it. Come to the tournament. Yes, the best part about it because it's a ran bat series. You don't even necessarily need to win in the brackets. It's this style also emphasizes consistency in doing well. Consistently. And showing up. Yeah. So, you guys want to pull up for that? By all means, feel free. Wait, hold on a second. Is this really? No, it's not. Okay, never mind. I got. I got mixed by something. Anywho, so this is going to be Eltonum and Aurier. People, people like the Eltham champion right now. I'm not going to lie. Eltham is looking real good. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've seen a fair few Eltham players getting things done, such as Omnidig in that Burst Limit series on Wednesdays for Yonder Night in Birth 2. Check it out. That said, Mr. B is himself on our top 10 leaderboard of the leaderboard right now. I think he's actually in like a, uh, ninth, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so see if he can make things happen in this bracket. But I think Eldam's just a very well-rounded character in this version of the game. Has very consistent combo routing. Has consistently high damage as well. Not hard at all to crack like the 3.5k range on your BNBs. So things are looking good here. Nice aggression. Manages to stay on the same side. Not going to send it straight up to the corner, but this is looking decent right now. Salty Goku, yes, we do have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Boston Blue Beat. Check out all of our VODs and matches there. Yeah, we've got a, we got a ton of stuff on there. Trust me, there's, there's a lot if you want to, like, pour over footage. Might have uh, put that on replay theater now that I think about it. Yeah. Stagger right there. Jesus. Things are looking good. And I like the decision to go for the CS here. One thing that has consistently um, been really impressive of Uni players over the years is the ability to route in CS for your combos right. in order to ensure that you are going into the next round with as many resources as possible. Yeah, I really, really like watching players optimize around that. I think it, uh, it took a, a good week or two for people to be like, oh, wait, this is like not just good, but important. Mm -hmm. And now it's pretty standardized. Here we go, Mr. B has the infinite worth. Concentrates up, but it's only barely enough to get the cycle. That buys him the reverse left of the chain oh shift. Punishes the goodness. DP. Has enough for one bar to extend this with. Is he gonna take it? Um, might actually go for it, yeah. C thrust doesn't quite kill, but the BDP afterwards does. Oh my goodness. All right, one apiece. And, that, and both of these were very, very confident play from these players. They're, they're willing to go for it. Thrust comes through. His space has to be safe, comes up again, summoned to lock down so I can pull up, open you up, knock, knock, give me this corner. All right, things are looking good to, to see you set up there. Ops to go for the low, no overheads right here, but it's going to be the run-up DP, in fact, a rather bold option here. Yeah. All right, EX cutting sick ends up connecting. This is going to be a decent ender here. Should be able to get a couple of extra enhanced bullets off of this uh, area. Things are looking good, 6B connects. Ooh, Ooh staggered in for it. Bring and Celestial, that's terrible space for Mr. B. Oh, wait a minute. With Celestial, you can pop Sivo and certainly kill off of this situation. Oh, absolutely. Let's see if we get the right route. Sivo, there it is. Into the infinite worth. That Ooh. will be the game, and that will be 1-0 for Nyan Nyan. That was a lot of damage. Yeah, that was uh, that was really good. And that's like one of the power, uh, that's some of the power of Celestial. 
the ability to flex your damage and threaten to kill in order to back people off. And uh, yeah, honestly, the ability to back people off as well as create more dangerous scenarios for your opponent just through the raw ability to get massive reward. 214B ends up connecting already in this round start and we are, oh my goodness, a drop. Things are looking all right. Shield That's plus Ooh. very important stand block there from Mr. B. Getting that grip broken this early on would have been really, really hard to recover from that snowball. Instead, finds the cycle for himself. Run up with the 2A. Anything? Yes, indeed. We're going overhead. Corner comes through. I don't think we spend here, do we? Nope. Let's go for a Oh, we're oh thrown out of the air. God. Elmums and Akatsuki's air throwing puts fear into my god heart, uh, god fearing heart. I said fear three times. Ignore that part. Anywho, good knockdown here. Going to get the reload. Ooh, the creeping nice edge. Goal. Oh, I love that RPS there. We saw that Elton was going for um, an air to air to beat you up in the air, and instead Orie spending the resources to keep the corner pressure, oh keep you grounded. Shield. Green shield. Broken with the throw to seal that round. Great awareness coming out of Mr. B. And I'm not gonna lie, that was that was one of those things where you be like, you'll be like, okay. Sometimes you, you, you like, you got me. Sometimes you look at you and you're like, all right, this is a high class, high route. Other times we're just looking for low crushing 30 times. And <laughs> one, the moment you decide to do a nice option and shield, we've already clicked CS to look for it, and you're getting good looking for your trouble. Those texts, CS is spent. Oh brother, six six C. Uh, this button in this patch is crazy. Oh my god. Plus, bullets? then you get the T2A afterwards. It's a little crazy. Yeah, right there was a little unfortunate. Didn't have bullets to extend too far with, but does mean you get a full grip of purple. Oh, jumps looking the decent. Oh my goodness, just immediate <laughs> dive in CS. Can we call that a setup? Are we giving it the benefit of the doubt? I, I, I genuinely have no idea. How Italian are we feeling? I'll be frank. Um, I will give it, uh, let's see. Uh, second generation son, uh, second generation son. I'll I, give it second. Give it like, give it like New Yorker? New Yorker, New Yorker, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I won't, I won't, I won't necessarily give it, you know, I think my top tier in terms of that is maybe like, first is like, uh, first generation Bostonian. That's a pretty, I, I was thinking, thing. I was thinking Sicilian. Sicilian? Yeah. That's fair. That's true, actually. I, I do like me some cured meats. Dude, I love Sicilian pizza. So oh, I love that. So you know, also I love Celestial Grid here for Altnum. And damage. Altnum's love 66C, six, oh. six by God. That thing hits overhead and then you just, just special cancel. You just gunshot down. Dude, that's 66C. That's six, six, it's crazy. Yeah, 2 0. Looking quite good for Neon Neon right there. And they're going to be playing against Carp in Loser's Quarters. Yeah. Goodness. Whew. I, I, I really like the way like Eldon's play pattern just like looks on the screen. Yeah. It has a lot of like visual up and down between the bounces around, you got the dive kicks, you got the air grab that just bounce around the trampoline. I don't know. Really fun character to watch. Also really cool to watch the way they optimize around the bullets in these combos. Like we can see in the replay here, you get like not an entire grip of bullets for the um, routing there, but it's it's pretty sweet that you can watch the resource management factor into how you're doing your combos more than any other character. For sure, for sure. Now that I think about it, it was pretty, hmm, I'm actually a little surprised. We didn't see as much, like, other bullet usage now that you're, like, mentioning it in terms of whether that's, like, Ricochet or, like, 236X to check at, like, certain mid-ranges. I'm not too entirely sure if that's, like, matchup specific or what have you, but that's just a thing that I, like, kind of, like, noticed uh, coming up here. So we've got um, a bit more of our top eight filled out here. So in the loser side, we have Stranger and Wooper. Uh, and then we will uh, have Carp versus Neon Neon. And then for our winner's final set, we will have Fox's 42 against two gigabyte combo. Uh, these are each sure to be very crazy sets. Yes, we have seen all of these players so far have um, really high ceilings. And this is a game that rewards that very, very heavily. Um, for it's sure. A, it's a legacy game, which means if you have that experience, you can leverage it very, very hard. Yeah, and I would say that, uh, honestly, what I would also say is that it is a legacy game, and the way that we talked earlier about the way that uh, like you know characters being stronger and character power being higher, one thing that's always been pretty interesting regarding trench bread games is that oftentimes when character power increases, it is due to something being additive. Yes. So that your earlier strategies are still effective and they still work 
Um, certain system changes, obviously, you know, add. But some very rarely do they just eliminate a combo route. Yeah, for yeah, yeah like, like, like all your clear combos are still working. Might just not be the best routes anymore. Yeah, we saw Wooper do plenty of like old like ST and clear routing, and that yeah. worked out like just fine for them, right? Because uh, let me tell you, trying to do those six six FF routes at mid screen, I good God, sometimes <laughs> uh, I get I get micro dash force function, and then I'm like. Amazing. I have given up grid and the confirm and my buff, and I'm just staring you at you. You know that's not what I wanted. Why, why you got to be like this? I know. It is It is. It is great pain. We're moving into, oh, yeah. So we got winner's finals here. This is going to be three out of five, of course. This set is, uh, let me tell you, this is going to be pretty crazy. Yeah, these two players have played each other many, many times. They, played, they were warming up with each other before the bracket started for a good hour and a half. You know, they're, they're, they're trying pretty hard, but you also got some good laughs between the two of them. You got some friendly camaraderie, some friendly rivalry going on. Ask a couple questions, give them a couple answers. So we'll see how these two play. I'm, I'm expecting them to be on layer two or three already, right? They've been playing each other for years, not to mention hours. So they, they definitely have a lot of insider trading knowledge going on. Yeah, and there's sometimes an aspect of that with um, players that have been uh, at it for a long period of time, whether or not they decide to reset back to like prior layer one strategies, or simply keep it, um, or keep up the tempo with like, okay, these are the things that like weren't working out for me in this casual set. It doesn't necessarily need to determine the entirety of my play, but I know where I am at yeah, currently. Yeah, you have I'm data to work with. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure to keep that in mind. Ooh, grid break already. That was really good. So the reason why that was particularly effective is that at round start, um, that was uh, on the dash up 5B. Fox immediately clicked a green shield there and two gigabyte zeroed in on that. Went for the 5A to tick, keep it simple, and then watch for that with green shield into the grid break throw. Very, very fast interaction there, but I really think that's a very impressive, frankly. To it's like it's that pattern there. recognition you were talking about before, right? Yeah. They've seen the situation, they know how to play around that and how to continue the situation to make the pattern match what they want. Yeah, and it's not even necessarily that, like, great 63C there. It's not even necessarily that, you know, Carmine is like a stagger monster. Right, He's no right. Wagner or Biafia. Or Kidu. Yeah, but still flexing that is really important, and I, I think that was very cool. We're moving into here into the corner. Both players extremely low at health. Another grid break, but on the side of Fox of here. Flower is set. Killed. Yule just veiled off in front of his face. Surely this is going to be plus frames here. Yep, spending that meter to try and keep things in your favor. Grid is still broken. Just now able to start building oh. that back. CS baits out into the win for Londrakia for Fox of. That was a, again, very quick recognition there at the end where it was button into. I'm minus into confirm the button, uh, bait it with a CS, punish with my own button. So uh, it's a pattern that comes up really, really often in this game. It's a, a, a quasi set play sort of thing where you can say, no, 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 I'm keeping my turn after inducing a stagger that isn't there naturally, but it's still a really heads up play. Oh, solid hit here right now for two gigabyte, but an unfortunate drop. Five eight to chase on the back dash. It does indeed catch it, but not quite there for the confirm. Rekka ends up getting caught out by the 63X here. Things are looking pretty solid for two gigabyte. And I believe we're in, uh, we're, it's time to see some mix-ups. Bomb, bomb, concentrate, throw down the wheel. There's the pop, waiting for it. Pop one, go low, stagger low. Oh my God. Throw works out for Fox of here, the 4C as well. Things are looking pretty great for Fox of. This is extremely doable, especially with Wondrecki's damage and his ability to also flex for a Celestial. He's not looking for it quite yet, I think, he I think he decided that he has enough damage off of the next confirm and manages to clip right there for it. And he used the CS early on in the confirm, which means he gets to carry over significantly more meter than if he had done on the last hit or two. Exactly. Early 236X, trying to be a bit mindful of it. Green shield whiffs, things are looking decent here. I like the way that Foxlet is basically doing like smash style short hops just to try and keep um, control of the ground with his long range aerial normals. Doesn't work out in this instance, though. I'm going to want to keep track of that, how they try and box them in over the course of the set. Bomb one. Ah! Uh, two. Uh, charge up. Cycle is going to be in his favor in just a times. second. Oh, my goodness. And I like the patience from 2 Gigabyte, not really flexing any option. You don't want to deal with no red mist or nothing here. Fox is still finding his way out of the, uh, out of, uh, the corner here. Back to mid-screen. Relatively even health for both players, but 2 Gigabyte finding a confirm here. No! Ooh, not quite enough! And the poke comes out for Fox up to oh. get the pick up. He has 200 meter to put behind this. There it is. Second game in favor of Fox up. We're at three out of five. There's still room for, for two gigabyte to come back, but that was 
really, really close. I swear to God, I look at Lawn 5 BB sometimes and I'm like, how did you thread this needle? I like the 4C there especially. 2 Gigabyte lately has been aggressing forward with a couple of buttons at round starts. It's a nice way to check for that while also backing off. Good tech on the throw. In fact, 2 Gigabyte actually input it so early that Fox have, uh, ended up teching it and uh, gained frame advantage as a result. That's a green shield right there on the Rekka. And it is an enormous chain shift. It filled all two bars. Locking down with the flower. Locking down with the flower again. Concentrating back up to Celestial again. Ooh. Nearly got it, but that last shield definitely, like, just barely yeah. took Fox of out of that. Jesus, the, some of those purple shields are a little dangerous. Looking for another green shield right there with the Rekka into CS. Opts for the, the full. Look at the grid. He's got Celestial in his back pocket. If Popped he can just get a side switch, yes, there it is. No. Ooh, drops it, though. Let's see if he ends up popping CS for the meter or just decides to hold on to the Celestial for the potential damage. Gets one throw. Another. Do it once more. Assault JC. Dashes up for the throw. Tech. Veil off from Fox. Of. We're back at mid-screen here. Plus frames with the 2 3 60. Hops over, but we're fine. These, tur these turns are trading back and forth. Go into the air here. Once again, the record comes through, cross through, air oh. again. The Belligerent up forward, JC here. <laughs> Puddle is set, 623X, but the throw is what ends up connecting here. We're back at mid screen. Fox of trying to find an ideal positioning. Forpool ends up going to 2 gigabytes, spends it immediately, and dashes up. The Fox of back tech that was so important doesn't matter though. Oh, one more touch needed for 2 gigabit. There it is with a bomb pop. Oh my god, just the willingness to just back off and allow Fox of to play himself like that. Here we go, back here. to neutral. Slowing down for just a second. Oh, the cross through into the DP. This is the, th that's what you were saying, right? I'm minus the two. Sweet, I'm minus man yeah. doing the most decrepit things. Oh my God, I'm minus two. Ha ha, surely you'll, surely you'll take your turn back. Ha ha ha, what if I force want you? <laughs> LMAO, whoops, my turn still. Oh my God, oh. Jesus. Good block right there. Things are looking pretty good for two gigabyte for this round. Might be able to seal the deal with the uh, meter discrepancy right now. Things are looking quite good. Oh, and throw with the shimmy. That, okay, we're going to talk about that in a moment there because that was devious. Talk to me now. This man's dead. We got a round Dude. to go through. So I love that because two gigabytes specifically in that game two was showing a ton of tick throw off of the 5A. Right. And we even saw it in their previous sets there. So going for that 5A there and then just walking back to look for the throw was really good. The last time we saw that, it was uh, emboldened by the fact that there was a puddle to set up a bomb there. But to do that without the resource available, I think is also impressive in and of itself. Emboldened is such a good word for that too, because the man did it with confidence, right? He's like, I have this conditioning that I've been establishing over the course of the last couple rounds, time to pay it off. Yeah, still popping for the tick throw right there. In fact, we saw the throw tech here, but things are going in favor of two gigabyte. Moves the puddle under Fox, of straight up jumps over him. This should lead into a kill here. Things are looking quite nice. 200 meter, not even going to need to spend a ton of it. Oh, opts to go for the IW. Guarantee your kill after the AB, the Smart Steer Ender. I totally get it. Yeah, I think it's the first AB Smart Steer Ender we've seen this set, too. An interesting choice there just to go for, like you were saying, the consistent routing. And 2 Gigabit has been unlocked in these last <laughs> couple games. I mean, I think the, you know, you've noted confidence a lot throughout these sets, and I think it's important to note here just in the ways Woo! that these round starts have changed. Staggered with the five A's here. Things are looking good. 200 meter to go. This should be another smart steer ender into a death, actually. Absolutely. That scaling is not that high. This Ooh. is going to be the second game in a row the two gigabit big gigabyte probably i have no idea took so quickly so confidently what what are you what are you looking for for foxo to adapt back uh, i think he needs to find some way to slow down the pace of the set right now i agree because it really does feel that like two gigabytes able to like run rampant currently fox of i think is a player that plays rather aggressively and will take his calculated risks um but there's a lot of spacings in which it feels like two gigabyte is feeling really, really confident in terms of just either covering space or like making a risky-ish approach. Woo! Flower ends up actually catching right there. I think either two gigabyte was looking for a different spacing or just got caught like uh, uh, not quite there on the dash block. 63C is going to guarantee the killer with the perfect Fox of is trying to move forward unperturbed into the winner side of Grands, but the wreck gets caught. Yeah, two gigabit <laughs> not going down without swinging back. Has a puddle to work with now. Has a reset puddle in the corner. The 2-2-X reversal for Fox of me seems to set down the flower and actually finds the freeze off of it again. That's the second time in this particular game, closing out the set, that the freeze coming from the flower has come through. And now Fox of 
pushing all the way from one corner to the other, freezes it back up again, has 200 meter right behind this chain shift, spends the infinite worth. Is this death? It most certainly is. Really great routing adjustments for Foxa to find a spot not only to get the CS, but to make sure that the combo literally goes on long enough that he builds that 200 meter for the IW and uh, set up the kill. That was an insane last two games there. So we had we had quick 2-0 for Foxa, and it looked unstoppable, right? Every move you make, I'm putting you in the corner, like we're seeing here with the Rekka and the replay. It is so easy for Lundrakia to put you where he wants you. Then we get two games back from 2 Gigabit, where it looks similarly unstoppable. He had pressure that Fox Up just couldn't find ways out of, was doing really, really good using the puddles mid-screen for space control that Fox Up was able to establish early on in the set. And then Fox Up just says, nah, I'd win. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I really do think that was, like, super dope. I think that was one of those things where, like, there's times when you're playing, as a competitor, there's times in which, like, you know, you're trying to grind it out, you're like, damn, I might get reverse uh, 3 0 here. Like, this is looking really rough. And, like, you really do just kind of, like, say, like, nah, I don't feel like this. I, think, I don't I, feel I like I got this. I don't, I, don't, I don't like losing. Nah, yeah. that's not going to happen. You know what is going to happen, though? Mm -hmm. This next game, we got Stranger going up against Wooper. Stranger on the Batista, Wooper on the Wagner. Uh, interesting, interesting matchup between these two. We got people basically, like, diametrically opposed to what they want to do, right? Batista has really, really good set play and really, really good zoning. Mm -hmm. um, it granted, I can kind of do everything because Batista privilege, except can get counter hit now, thank God. Wagner, a little more specialized on rushdown. Um, and the, the installs do definitely add another dimension to that, that, that little flavor that Wagner can cook up on there. But I think it's going to be really interesting watching the way these two very different tool sets approach each other. Yeah, and when, uh, you know, back in the day around like ST and Fear, uh, especially when Fox was primarily on Batista, there was a time period where like you would look and at like sets versus like Fox and Red Blade, and there's so many insane intricate matchup dynamics here. Like each character has to like figure out very specific, oh brother, this is, uh, we're gonna get to that in a moment right now. We are we are moving fast. We got, we got history lessons some other time, old man. We got fighting to do now. I think I'm younger than you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than like 90% of the people here. What do you want from me? I, look, 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 you're the one that called me old man. I'm just vibing out. I'm just vibing out. I wasn't going to call you old. I wasn't going to call you old. Oh, that's fair. All right, here we go. Disco ball. I, I was alive when disco balls mattered, by the way. I I have seen so much 236 uh, from Uber <laughs> in places where I was shocked that that would, uh, uh, in shocking areas. I uh, want to also note there that a uh, force function from Wagner is uh, it's neutral on block now. Uh, used to be minus two. So you may see that come up in a couple of offensive situations where, like, you space yourself out using the force function and then maybe, like, a 5B to kind of, like, slam uh, and cover that space here. For the time being, though, it's the Batista show right now. The ball moving ever so slowly, but Wooper unperturbed, quite frankly. Looking pretty good here. Not oh going to get no. the rest of the combo, though. I think they could have killed two if they had converted fully into the infinite worth, the 200. Might have oh. been a sliver, but it was close. Double install coming through now. Plus 10, gonna spend the shield buff here. Green shield ends up whiffing. Plus 10? Yeah, that's plus 10. Jesus. Yeah, that's plus 10. My it's mind. been that way, it's been that way for since ST, dude. I've been playing this game for like four months, what do you want from me? It's been, dude, I, I've only, I played, I played ST Wagner. I played yeah, ST yeah. Wagner. I, I, that's why I've I need you. Gone through the life sometimes. Yeah, that thing is plus 10. Uh, really, one of the big things actually about Wagner that's that's buffed in this version, and, and you haven't seen it as much from Wooper, uh, is that burn roots are a lot better, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk, we'll get there if we get there. Uh, that was a force function through, I think, the ball, but the parry <laughs> up beating the special cancel. You see it right there again, right? That on the uh, on absorbing a projectile, the cancel, uh, the direct special cancel into something. But uh, Stranger is already like kind of another step ahead in throwing out a physical hitbox ahead of time in order to stuff the uh, shield, uh, the shield tackle that uh, results from there. Yeah, there we go. Infinite Worth closes out the round for. Uh, stranger getting on the board. Eraser, this is at Balance Patch in Boston. This is where we ha have all of our offline monthlies, as well as our offline weeklies, but uh, that's, a, that's a little bit of a different organization. But, yeah, you know, mostly the same people. Pretty much. Uh, so if you... Oh, good heavens, you had a crouching shield. That is very unfortunate here. Things are looking pretty good for Stranger right now. Gets the ball. Drill ends up connecting. Not a full confirm, but things are looking fine. Wagner at about 40% health. This is decent. Is the Drill an overhead? 
Yes. I, I, I imagine so. Beedrill, Beedrill is a whole oh god. Walk up to Fox of and show him a picture of the Pokemon and just see what he says. Just, just, <laughs> just trust me. Just trust me. Just trust me. Can be show him. Can I be a Kakuna? Can I go to level two? Show him. It's got to be Beedrill. Show him regular Beedrill. If you want to be goofy, show him Mega Beedrill. There we go. Trust me. Chain shift coming through. Ooh, counter with the orb. Really? That was a bold choice there. All right, 2360 ends up connecting here. Should be able to kill off of this confirm. ADP doesn't even need it, actually. Yeah, it keeps the meter, too. Doesn't have to extend at all. Easy peasy. Getting on the board. I think that's the first one for them in the set. Yeah. Oh, no. That 214 is not ideal there. No projectile info properties whatsoever. We've seen Wooper lean into it a decent amount in terms of his offense. There are times in which it's worked surprisingly well where we've seen uh, Stranger opt for, like, a green shield in certain places, and then uh, Wooper gets a free, like, uh, grid break throw from there, but... That was kind of dirty. That B drill was so d close to the ground, ended up having very few active frames. Got to steal a turn just by using it. B drill ends up connecting once more. Things are looking quite good until they don't. BDP comes out, swap sides, and we're back on offense here. But the two BB again, we've seen that from Stranger in like s across a different like sets and matchups, and just its effectiveness is so good. Goes for the force Oh my, I've not seen that. I'm not gonna lie, that one was new. <laughs> that was, that was kind of dirty. Going for his uh, <laughs> high low into the left, right high into probably another high low after that. Yeah, I. So the the left right probably is covered under cross up protection. Probably so cross up protection is really really bold in this game. But what kills me is the force function CSJC. That's that's rude. <laughs> that is not kind. <laughs> Ooh, the infinite worth out of the diamond. That man went to Shea Company. Oh, man, we're not in California. Y'all don't have the, the <laughs> Shea Diamond commercial happening every 10 seconds. I do not have that. Dude, like, my, my parents watching right now understand why that's funny. Oh, damn. I promise. It's okay. There's a plenty of West Coasters for uni. We'll see what happens. Oh, Here, wow. Assault him to throw. Things are looking solid. Another B drill. And I'm not going to lie. It's been pretty great for Stranger right now, the way that, like, he's hiding some of these uh, B drill partitions here. Disco CS ball into here? CS, yeah. Oh, no. Invalid combo, actually, straight up. But Wooper hasn't been teching out of there. I think that would have gotten him out of the corner. Speaking Throw of tech, tech, yep. One more touch as well. They need spending the CS approach behind the bouncing ball. He's looking for a shield. Yeah. I swear yeah. to God, he's looking for a shield. Absolutely. Can't find it though. Diamond comes through. Cycle goes over to our Wagner aficionado. Ooh, the throw is a counter hit. Trying to push toward the corner a little bit further. And. Wooper's leaning into some of these staggers, but right now, a really good adjustment that uh, Stranger's doing, he's not actually shielding as much. Some of this, uh, some of these strings are actually really designed to like look for a couple of shields here. We'll get to that in one moment. Jesus, trading positions. Still in the corner, looking for a shield, but it's the JC that ends up just clicking, clicking, uh, clipping overhead outright uh, for the 2-0. That will take Stranger strange. into loser semis. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. And th I I like some of the things Wooper seems to be looking for. Go for a lot of. Um, Run my pressure, back up, see if there's going to be any sort of response. And oftentimes, the play from Stranger was to play a little more patient, a little more passive. Mm -hmm. And Wooper was like, all right, cool. The EX uh, Berserker Barrage in, call it a day. Uh, I like that kind of structure to the offense, but Batista's a really hard character to make that happen on because they have so many projectiles with so many different timings and so many different spaces that they cover that choosing the right approach option can be a difficult ask. Yeah, you could you could write a genuine essay on the changing nature of the uh, Batista uh, Wagner matchup, I swear. Um, one thing that I think is also pretty interesting, um, you know, I, I, I just wanted to highlight some of the some of the block strings that you'll see uh, that at least we saw from uh, Wooper. Um, one thing that's really important on like most rushdown characters is how you play around your rebeats, resetting pressure, and watching for certain shield uh -huh. uh, shield habits. So, for example, um, if my opponent is spamming practically green shield, uh, understanding the ranges at which you're at so that you can go for a rebeat that ends up causing the green shield to whiff, uh -huh. uh, understanding your spacing at, hey, can I straight up grid break throw, or am I actually just going to take the plus frames here? Um, for Eltonum, a little bit different in that a lot of her buttons are forward advancing, right. uh, as well as her Vorpal trait uh, enabling a couple of whiff cancel options here. Uh, we'll see if that pans out, but for the time being, uh, it's in the corner with a whole lot of purple. And the grid break, that is the enhanced, ver that is the uh, charged version of 2 and 4 b That is a gold throw normally, but it is really good for looking for green shields in certain situations. Uh, I think, uh, honestly, now that I think about it, there's a lot of characters that got uh, a couple of ways to call out green shields. 
You know what else I'm calling out? This what? life discrepancy already? It's been like 10 seconds. I The song literally just started, if you guys can still hear it, and, and it's it's done. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the game, the round. That's a, that's a round on the board for <laughs> our Nyan Nyan, in fact, already. Fights a counter hit as well, and like, this is just out neutraling the Yuzuriha, which is so hard to do. Her I buttons cover so much space. Even then, it's just kind of like, I'm just gonna run in, man. Let's see what you're gonna do. <laughs> what are you about? It's early on the set. I got, I got some games to spare. Basically, and again, this is still like two out of three. We're in the, we're in the loser side of things. We're not quite in the finals range. Wow, that two A actually really caught the uh, approach. I was surprised that it uh, uh, working that far. And this is one of the things I think is so strong about Eltnum is her like full screen hit confirming is so simple and straightforward, but so effective, right? Yeah. You can just go ahead, fire the gun a couple times, and spend the meter to get a hard knockdown so that you can run in and start running your pressure. It's a very stable game plan. But here we go, Yuzuriha having basically the same kind of idea with those far reaching two three X's. And one thing that I've been finding interesting, we saw like there were like three instances. Oh, that kills. Yeah. Jeez. IW I do sometimes every time I, I just assume IW kills these look days. I the problem we had that we made that assumption and then we were wrong and I'm like what the heck and then sometimes people just die anyway yeah that's an <laughs> overhead I hate that oh god it's 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 a time all right this, this is a bit of a funky confirm gets the reload at least oh I see I see this is this is a that's how we're doing something it. that is beyond me the, I'm not gonna lie dashing up and just neutral jumping into nothing and then jump again to dive kick is funny as hell Yep, go for the gun to the CS just to keep the turn oh going into the no. command grab. Confirm. So simple with the perfect getting the first game on the board. And that was a molly whopping. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Neon is running with a ton of momentum right that, now. That was rough. Let's see what Carp uh, Let's see what Carp is up to in terms of adjustment today. Wow, just roll it full screen right and there. And look at the all of the grid that shielding the quad slash from Yuzu gave uh Nyan Nyan just out of the gate. Oh my god, yeah, you're right. That was that was borderline celestial. If that like if that one uh I think two three six B didn't clip them, that legitimately would have been celestial into okay I have like two hundred meters. And it was risky do? too because if Carp had changed up their timing enough for it to be uh, an ineffective shield, it would have been a problem. But here we go, Carp with the two hundred meter behind this probably doesn't even need it, I don't think. Thirty seven hundred thirty eight resourceless damage. Mm -hmm. Things are looking pretty good. Back dashes out of the way of the 214X. Things are looking fine right now. Jumps back. Laser ends up connecting, however, into the 2C. This is going to be decent corner carry. Maybe not a ton of bullets, really, or at all. Veil off comes out now. Really want to show some of those defensive options, and that is a insane BDP, I'll, I'll be quite frank. That was mm -hmm. a very bold decision. Really looking heavily from a reversal option from Carp. Look at the grid again. Run up like quad 2A means the grid goes really heavily in favor of Carp, but already swinging back. Oh, the DP punish. This is going to be so much damage if they can optimize this. We saw 3,600 resources. Can't we see more? This Already 37, 38. Oh, oh didn't spend it, though. No reversal option available right there. Or actually, no, I think that could have maybe like gone for 2 4 6. What got stuffed? I think it might have been laser there. And right now, just look at the way in which Neon Neon feels so comfortable, literally dashing up full screen and showing an option. Yeah, just like bobbing and weaving in and out of ranges that they think users are probably trying to represent because we can with punish that with the 236X because that's just kind of the game plan for Eldum, right? I can win at any of these ranges, it's except on top for the of one especially where the, the tip range of Yuzu wants to land. Yeah, Otherwise, I, it's the, uh, the Eldum zone. Yeah, I, I see what you mean by that. That was also a, a neat TRM right there. Um, but it's uh, it's most certainly, I think, the ways in which Neon Neon is extremely bold, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I think against Yuzu, it is often a, uh, shall we say, it is a t arduous task uh, to be willing to like dash up full screen and do something. Um, and yeah, I'm not Sisyphus sure. Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the mountain with a samurai in your face, not easy. Basically, a samurai that's like teleporting around, mind you. But I think, honestly, Carp has been having a hard time using some of the slashes or positioning or like choosing some of the slashes to cover spaces in which Neon Neon wants to occupy. So we've seen a lot of cases in which that was really good. Ooh, that was a dope CS. That DP is that gonna was, be death whew. for sure. Oh no! Okay, we're fine, we're fine. Nothing is ever cool. certain. Nothing Everyone is certain. Cool. We it's got fine. The, it, you know, nothing is certain un until you know we, we right our wrongs. I don't know what lesson there is from our team, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, mash 2A. Uh, true. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm learning. Oh, that reminds me. I don't know if you ended up catching it. There was these exhibition sets against. Uh, oh, they were so good. The the Makoto Fox one. Do you see the one? Do you see the one knockdown where like um, Papa Pesto gets his knockdown and from like mid screen <laughs> just dashes up and just mashes two A <laughs> and takes the game. <laughs> it 
<laughs> I was like, you're insane. Rubik's my goat. Like <laughs> that was that was nuts. I was like, you know what, man? Yeah, you do got it. Oh, Ooh. nice parry. Absolutely. With a side switch, I believe. Yes, indeed. Yuzu's so good at controlling which side of the screen she wants to be on. But just charging up. CS into the two three six X. Nope, not happening. With punishing, with well, not quite with punishing, but punishing with the gun in response. That's gonna be set point for Nyan Nyan. 236X, oh my goodness, really looking heavily for like some option. Tried to, okay, I think that was a whiff into the dodge, but okay, this is a, a, a bit of a batch of funkiness, but we're gonna make do with a simple 660 under. Tries to roll out, immediately called out. We're seeing purple on both sides, VO and the bullets. Try and spend some of that meter while you can, the VO, we got no penalty for using the EXs. Teleport on the other side. This is looking pretty decent for Carp, but one thing that really has been an issue in this set for him is just maintaining like a good spacing at neutral. Dodge ends up coming out successfully. Things are looking pretty decent here. And one thing that's incredibly important for Yuzuria is maintaining that like cycle. Oh my God, that was, that was insane. Okay. That's the adaptation. We've seen that laser being represented extremely heavily. Obviously, like anyone playing Eldam is gonna want to use that button. It's super good. But going up into the air to try and play around that spacing is the adaptation that Carp is showing. Oh my, Che A connects, and I'm not gonna lie, I feel like Carp is willing to just say, you know what, man? I'm just gonna jump around you. We're gonna see what happens here. Let's see if I can get you to whiff something good. Reset opportunity, opts for the simple 6 6 ender here, looks for the TRM once more, catching the throw option from Carp, and they are going to take it 2-0 here. Neon Neon moving on to loser semis, where they will fight against Stranger. Yeah, really, really well played there from Neon Neon. I thought the space control was particularly impressive like we can see here in the replay that the user buttons cover so much space like that's the defining feature of useriha right how much space they can control both horizontally and vertically with the different versions of the two three x's but the way that Nyan Nyan was able to not just play around that but nullify that advantage with the laser in response is really really heads up playing on the spacing yeah i wonder hmm i just i'm again i'm still so curious because it wasn't necessarily Carp like not even like opting into stance or what have you, but it felt like Carp again just really had a tough time positioning himself either after a couple of stance uh, Batos got blocked and as well as kind of like trying to position themselves like up high in order to like navigate around neutral a few times. So there was like a there was like a lot of instances in which like Nyan Nyan would kind of just dash around like stay at a decent spacing under and they'd either 236x or they would happen to catch with like a, a bold like run up 3C, for example. Yeah. Well, you know what else is pretty bold? What's that? The, uh, the fact that some people haven't yet signed up for Burst Limit. If you're watching this, I know you like playing Uni. I know you like this game. That means every Wednesday for the next couple of weeks, you should tune in to the Boston Blue Beat stream. We got our Burst Limit series running for 10 weeks. We're currently about to go into week eight with the winner getting uh, some really good points to work toward the invitational at the end of the series. Exactly, yeah. And again, if you guys are interested in other games, we have Blaze Blue on yep. Mondays at 8 p.m. and we also have Plus R on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. So we got a ton of stuff going around there. Um, and for Uni in particular, um, again, kind of to like bring this back, uh, a lot of this tournament can be said as kind of like, again, the last tune-up uh, leading into next week's Uni Major. Um, crossover arc hosted by the folks over at WASD in New York. Uh, that's going to be at uh, OS in NYC. We'll get some more details on that later, but you're going to see some of these players over there. And it's going to be great. Absolutely, yeah. Now we're going to see these two players in particular. We got Stranger going up against Neon Neon. Stranger coming out to a strong start, getting a quick 30% down already, and they're not done yet. Things are looking solid. Back at mid screen here. A gem is set, but Honestly, it feels like Nyan Nyan is not really bothered by it too heavily. And we've seen that uh, particular sequence from Stranger before, the force function into like the CS. And I, at this point, I'm wondering if that's kind of like just a decent poke to, you just did 236X. No. I'm assuming, I don't know if that was a DP that like got misinput or what, but that was a 236 startup. I saw her pull that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. It hurts when you get those. Oh, the Creeping Edge gets out of the pressure of the orb that Stranger was trying to follow behind, but not gonna matter. We got the nearly perfect coming through for the first game. And right now already, you can see the stark difference in kind of like zoning effectiveness right now from the last set where Nyan Nyan really like showed their ability to like dash around and move around the screen. Right now, even within the first two rounds, 
it feels like Stranger has managed to be far more restrictive in terms of either setting gems to make certain spacings more difficult to navigate through, or at the very least showing like a couple of lasers and so on in order to like cover some of that like mid range. So honestly, been really really like cool stuff there from a uh, Stranger. A flash kick into <laughs> the sea ball. Oh, that's despicable. Means the second <laughs> game goes over to Stranger already. They, they thought they had the read, right? They were like, all right, cool. We got the CS. We got the flash kick. I'm good. I'm going to punish. No, no, no. It was, in fact, the wrong flash kick. It's still my turn. I'm going to do something even worse and take the game right up under your feet. Dude, when you autopilot and then you look at the screen and you see that the word invincibility isn't on there uh -huh. and, the e and then you hear the EX cancel noise, I'm like, all right. And yeah. now, <laughs> like the, I'm, I'm thinking of like Sinatra at that point, <laughs> dude. Like, God. The grip breaks a good way to fight back, though. Mm -hmm. Corner pressure coming through. I, I like the way the stranger tries to buy back space with the projectiles when they're trapped in the corner. But Eltonum really, really good at fighting back from that range, so it's not going to be as effective as it would be against many other characters. Again, very quick round. Yeah, I, honestly, this, this, these last two sets have been really fast. Yeah. Um, killing games do be killing. Dude, yeah, for sure. But it's even then, like, there are times in which it's just kind of like, oh, like, you just ran through your interactions really fast. Like, yeah. all right, sure. Like, you know, I, I rock with it, I suppose. Things are looking solid here. Once again for Nyan Nyan in this second round here, a stark change from the uh, from game one, quite frankly. You just 6-6 six, six beat, like, twice? Jesus Christ. You know what? If it leads into damage like this, I think they'll, they'll take it. Oh, uh, you know, I Drop combo. a little too soon. CS is the EX flash kick. Set down the disco ball, try and get yourself the approach. A lot of space given, and then trying to take it back immediately with a throw, but the break is great. Doesn't matter when the confirm comes through for the laser. Dropping again. Oh, no, so close here. Oh. And the throw bait with the jump. b drill is trying to extend the combo. Set the gem down. Set another one. We got we got a third? No, we're just going for the disco ball. Jesus, I I, I don't know which side to block there. I Or the float cancel, too. The b drill comes down. We got a meter to work with. CS to try and fill it up. Oh, oh but you no. I can't play with your food like that. Oh, he's gonna be cutting sick. Oh! Really oh. smart, uh, really smart choice. Recognizing the spacing there and going for the EX cutting sick. Not many characters have tools that will directly hit like that uh, when uh, Batista is that high above them. Really good recognition of uh, Eltlum's tools right there. And grid break coming through again. The second game in a row where we're starting off. Oh, an invalid combo too? Oh, we're red beaten. Jesus. Uh, these things hurt. Oh my god. Okay, airbag <laughs> dash. Gunshot ends up connecting. This is looking really good. Another invalid combo. Y'all need to stop trusting each other's confirms. I never <laughs> trust anybody's confirms. I always think everybody's trash when they hit me. And then if I tech out and then I hit them, I feel godlike. And when people do that to me, I, I, I hate them too. Yeah, so yeah. Things happen. There's pain yeah. all around. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to confirm. Yeah, here we go. Please, I'm just begging you don't drop this. Okay, we got the gem set up. Ooh, oh my god. Put the toes, carry into the corner. Got 200 to go behind us. Okay, this would not kill with IW. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, yes, that is definitely not gonna kill. This is just gonna be okay. Yeah. Time to guess. Plus frames. Oh, guard thrust. We haven't seen that uh, come up as often. Wow, two FF for the confirm. That's really good, actually. I, I love that a lot. This is gonna lead to the kill there. But, uh, 200 meter to carry over to after using the CS. Excellent routing. Really, really good here. Ball at round start. 2 and 4B doesn't end up connecting. Those purple shields are pretty dangerous. We already seen that Neon Neon is very willing to like uh, go for the IC 2 and 4B in order to check for purple shield and grid break out right. Got to be pretty mindful of that. A flash kick ends up coming out here. A couple of gems here. We're chilling out for the time being. Yeah, I love the use of the gem to try and hold down just the mid-screen pressure because that's something that Batista is really, really good at controlling that Elmum also wants to control at the same time, right? Really good way to try and keep control of that space without having to do it actively. You can do it relatively passively just by, like, like we were talking about with CS, the threat of having it existing yeah. in that space. Oh my, force function coming out. I was not expecting that option out of many. Things are looking pretty good for Stranger here, though. 200 meter, a dropped combo. I don't know if this is going to end up Ooh, leading the to them. Edge. Losing the round here. Overhead 6 6 ends up connecting. Let's see what we get here. Limited resources to work with. The bullets aren't purple. Only got one meter to work with. I think we just dump the bullets, try and reload for purple. Yeah, has to go for it here. Two, yep, two, six, it all. Oh my god, dashing up, they were looking for a TRM or they were looking to prompt Stranger into doing anything, but the down backing child will indeed flash kick forward and through. That means we have our top 
three established. Two gigabit combo has been waiting patiently down in losers finals. Gonna go up against the winner of that in Stranger. That will be Nyan Nyan out in fourth. Very good play. Uh, all, the, all these fans in chat, I've seen you hyped up Nyan Nyan. You should be proud, did a really good job. This is a really stacked bracket, I'm not gonna lie. So getting fourth here, really good looks. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, so now we are moving on to, so Stranger and Two Gigabyte Combo. Um, I am like 50% sure this set happened on winner side. Uh, let's, let's take a look. I want to double check. I think I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That was in uh, winter semis. Yeah, yeah. So then two gigabyte taking it over uh, Stranger there two one. So I'm curious to see if uh, what adjustments either both players bring. Frankly, um, of course the onus is on Stranger as a person that like lost. Right. But um, I think as the winner, you also need to make sure that you're plotting out what your next steps may be, what your opponent's habits are. So I'm like, okay, these things were very effective. This is like the fallback strategy. Let's double check. Uh, let's you know touch up on what uh, points will be used as the evolution. Yeah, like what have either of us shown? Play. What have we not shown? Do we have layers that we need to develop? Do we have layers that we're working well that we can just fall back on? Uh, I, I also think it's interesting that it's Batista versus Carmine, right? Because they're both kind of opposite sides of the same coin. They both have really good screen control that revolves around setting up resources that you use later with another sort of interactive tool, uh, but. Carmine does it to try and enforce pressure and like gain momentum. And Batista can, absolutely can, often does, but by comparison wants to do it more for keep away zoning and uh, further screen pressures. So yeah, and I think um, on top of that, right, there is also some of the notions of like the specific ways in which their uh, their tools that like kind of give them screen presence, how they like uh, work. For example, yep. like gems, Excellent for maintaining very long pressure strings, generating plus frames. If people don't know how, if somebody doesn't know how to deal with the gem, they're screwed. Oh yeah. Um, whereas for Carmine, you know, even like setting up like a double wheel and just dashing at somebody, it's a lot more. It's like more direct. extreme, yeah. almost. Yeah, direct. I think that's a that's a good way of putting Boulder. it. Boulder. Yes. Oh, learn that word from a friend today. <laughs> learn, learn to use that word from a friend. Mm. <laughs> Either way, we're going into the losers' final set here. These two players have gone through a ton of stack, have, have gone through a pretty stacked bracket in general here, just to make it this far and find the privilege to fight against Fox of 42, in who is chilling out right now in winter side of grand finals. Yeah, Fox of has been having uh, time of his life in UDQ so far. That, that man has gotten a lot of success. Yeah, and uh, honestly, more power to him. I'm glad yeah. that he's been having a blast, streaming a bunch as well. Um, it's been Running really sets cool. constantly. Yes. Man, I'd open a calendar. That for people to run sets with him. That is the funniest I, thing I ever. I'm not so gonna funny. lie. That is a that is a level of organization that I aspire to. All right, here we go. Losers finals. Top three here. Two gigabit combo going up against Stranger. Opening up patiently. I like this. There's gonna be a best of five again, like we were talking about before, up on the top side for winners finals. So we got some time to develop here. Two gigabit winning the first cycle. Going for the shield there and actually mashing here. And another thing that we're, we saw a little bit of it uh, in their last set, but it's the way that both players are kind of playing around their 2B range. Um, we'll see times in which, oh, are you going to, are you please, are you going to make this a repeat of, you did, you did. You made this a repeat of game one where he just threw like four times in a row. If it works. He added a little bit of spice. He did a whole, he did a whole 2A and then waited <laughs> this time, you know? A little bit of, it's a little call salt that, Call that a mix up. That's a salt and pepper. <laughs> Give, give me those four frames mixed up. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Falling down on the buttons is going to be Stranger. Find themselves in a dire position already. 50% down because of that one anti-air. Two gigabit. Got one puddle to work with. Sending it out for the confirm. Another puddle to replace. Going to look for the chrysalis? No, just oh, the corner pressure. Goodness. Not quite there for the rest of the confirm. 200 meter to go. 6B to cancel out the ball here. Ooh, mm. sends down the puddle right underneath their toes. Pop it for the round for the game. 1-0 immediately swinging out the gate. And the craziest part about it was that I'm pretty sure that Perry from Stranger was looking for that exact thing. Right. And then was just barely off in timing. I was mentioning this before, but once again, the way in which 
Two Gigabyte really wants to play around that puddle in order to enforce his offense further. It's very interesting, both in like when he chooses to like go for an ordinarily riskier option or plays it even greedier. Ooh, pops the puddle to try and slide him out of the air, but the chain chip gives them time to confirm the situation, use the drill to come down on top of him. Now we got gems in the corner. We got gems in our face. We got balls too. Yep, I said it. That's right, Toledo. That's all good here. Jam is set up in the face once more, forced to block here, and not confident perhaps in the 63C, opting to block it all out. There it goes, but unpunished, a little too far. Plus frames right now. A few shields getting shown here, but right now, frankly speaking, Stranger finding a grid break over here. Yeah, and he wasn't going to win that cycle either, so the grid break managing to bring them into the Vorpal for themselves. Chain shift behind the bouncing ball means they get to run up. Confirm, smack him in the face. One apiece, or one, no, 1-0 one -oh here in this game. These games are going by extremely quickly here. Leaves out with the ball, but the clash on the 6B. Two gigabyte really trying to use some of those like buttons and like projectiles in order to cancel out some of uh, the potential of Batista like zone coverage here. Yeah, and I really like the way that two gigabyte mixed up his approach timing there in that last neutral interaction. He dash blocked about halfway up to Stranger, and then in the time where there was a little bit of hesitation to confirm the situation, ran up the rest of the way to find a counter hit. Green shields coming out here, and if I'm two gigabyte, I am ever so watchful for it. Throw comes out, no grid break. Second throw comes out, a second puddle has landed on there. Throw comes out. They, they felt immediately prompted by like seeing Stranger move there. Yep. Throw ends up not being the correct call out. Disco ball is set over. It's time to party like it's 1999. Yeah, the empty assault does not cause two gigabit to twitch. Shields coming through, like you said, we're seeing it a little bit, but not as much like sitting on the shield by any means. Confirm with the A, B, Ender into the E, X means we got one apiece here. Carrying over at least one bar well-structured round ender from two gigabit there. Things are looking pretty solid here. A couple of purple shields getting shown here from Stranger. Uh, and it's a weird feeling because the threat of throw has been established so hard by two gigabyte. Almost over-established, like intentionally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a, uh, oh my goodness. There's probably some like in incredibly like random foodie term that like exactly applies here, but you know, we'll, yeah. we'll figure out the words and shit. Oversaturated? Later. Yes, actually. Shit oh salty. God. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like they put a microphone on me for a reason. Oh, my God. It's not, not many of them, just like one or two reasons. But oh, like okay. Yeah. Well, hey, they're pretty good ones. Sure, I'm not going to lie. All right, slipping right oh under, setting out the EX, God. trying to hold down the neutral, but no flash kick into the disco ball, using the laser to push <laughs> back under the ball. The Please stay there. No, no, Please no, stay hold there. on, hold on. You were where you were. We've like, we got to work with this for a second. No, we're going to go for the assault buttons. Getting the double wheel down, popping all of these puddles. Looking for the chrysalis? Nope. What? Well, not yet. There it is. Bombs. Ah. Right. Oh. Number two. Ah. Oh. Pop the puddle. Pop the puddle. Pop the puddle. Pop the puddle. JPJC double bombs over here. This is looking fantastic. Should lead into a Sevo. Doesn't even need it. Ops to go for the AB Ender with the CS to gain the meter. IW will get it done, and that is game two for two gigabyte. We get the Jaws theme song out here. We were waiting for that. We knew it was coming up from under you in the in the puddle underneath. Whew, who knew a shark could fit in such small little bit of, bit of blood on the floor? Dude, I felt anxious and I'm Smell not. Smell blood even in the water. I was yeah. Look. <laughs> don't give me that look. Don't give me that look. You know what I'm about. Don't give me that look. Don't give me that Gems coming down. We got Karma oh, down to a third God. already. Make that maybe a half? Jesus Christ, yeah, this is like five seconds, guys. Hold on a second. We're busy we're, making, we're busy we're making, laughing we're here. making puns and such. Yeah. Okay, five A connects. All right, this is looking real nice for and it's awkward again. We're fine though. Back to mid screen. No puddles on the screen, no gems as well. Yeah, and getting awkward is like exactly where that pattern recognition we were talking about earlier comes in, right? Making it awkward is a way to screw with your opponent saying, I know what's going on right now. For sure. So so when you can use like chain shift to throw off their timing, exactly like this, you think it's your turn, you go and use the chain shift to try and like alter up what the pattern should look like. It's one of those ways to overload the mental stack as fast as you can. Undernight BR rating with 16 viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. This is the losers finals in our uni two bracket here at Boston Blue Beat offline monthly. Right now we got two gigabit holding down the corner against Stranger. Get the puddle down. Pops it for the counter here when they're trying to jump out. Things are looking pretty decent here. A lot of health spent on it, but these drops are looking real bad here. We got two puddles to work with, though. Yeah. yeah, easy. Bring 200 into the next round. On, on the other side, on the other side. So that does mean Stranger is going to have some... The laugh? He lit the laugh, Rock? Oh, 
Oh. Of course, of course. Dashes up with the 5B into nothing. Still trying to play around that Vatista 2B range here. Comes out right here. Things are looking fine for 2 Gigabyte. Backs off with the puddle in front of them. Force function to move it around. And you Man. see both of them like concentrate back and forth, saying, I don't think you can approach me in the time where I can try and steal this grid block. And one of the other important things about those concentrates is that they will indeed speed up the time of the cycle. Right. So there's a couple of times in which you can snipe the cycle if you have like a slight lead on it using some of those concentrates. So that's really good play from both players here. Thus far, we're now at mid-screen. Not going to lead into, this combo's not going to lead into the corner. We got a little bit of a disco party here. You pressed on that? I think sometimes you gotta let them know. Yeah, uh, they, they, you, have to, you have to represent that you're willing to be bold. Yes. Yeah. Back throw into the corner, set down one puddle, try and. Yo, uh -oh. the grid break and coming through. This is gonna look mighty dangerous. Stranger has to take control of the neutral for the time being, if only to delay on the cycle, but Jesus. He sniped out the startup of the EX disco ball, pushing Stranger into the corner, has two puddles to work with, just one now. Going old school means the flash kick will land on the 2A, 5A pressure. Not enough meter for a veil off. Not enough meter for a guard cancel. Well, now finally enough meter for a guard cancel. Not opting to use it. 2 Gigabyte has shown too many hesitations in his play. That's been well established. It's super hard to manage that, but the spacing on the 2BB has been immaculate here from 2 Gigabyte as they 3-0 Stranger and punch their ticket into Losers Finals. Here. And he, he bought that win by giving up space. Yes. The, the, the disco ball came down, but he wasn't cornered, backed up slowly, calmly said, I don't need to be here, and then Stranger jumped in, but there was enough space that he had bought himself that he could use that to snipe out the jump approach, and he was still outside of the range of the disco ball. The spacing was so heads up. Really, really well done from 2 Gigabyte there. And we saw, like, lots of these sort of things all across the set, right? You can see here in the replay, making sure that he has the meter to uh, use the AB ender into the infinite worth because he's 200, so he had to use the chain shift to make sure he can set up for that. It means he gets the run back against Fox Up. These two are going straight into it. And I'm not going to lie. If you guys ended up catching this, uh, if you guys w have been on the stream a little bit earlier, this is a repeat of our winner's final set here, where it went 3-2 in favor of Fox. So at first, we were looking at a potential 3-0, and then 2 Gigabyte proceeded to make a message in those next two games. A close game five, at least in that second round there, but it ended up going in Fox's favor here. So I am willing to bet that w this is set is likely going to go the distance once more. Here we go. Trying to see if that is the case. I have the utmost of faith that will be grand finals here for Uni2. Chat, if you're there, if you're with me, let me hear you. We got Londrakia, we got Carmine, Fox of making it happen early on, pushing all the way to the corner. I like the willingness to go for the 2A mash out on the very first interaction coming out of 2 Gigabit. And like, you know, like you said, you gotta let them know. For sure. 2B ends up losing against the Rekka here. This is looking very good for Fox of. Should be able to freeze here. He's got all the time in the world to figure out whatever Oki he wants. Sets the flower up, keeps it simple. 2B whiffs, dash up throw, not gonna be quite enough to kill here. Let's see what Fox is does on offense here. Top one, Eltonum, I see you chatting for the first time. Hell yeah, here we go, two gigabit. Try to find something for the throw. Yeah, the, the 5B caught the back dash, but no follow up from him there. Probably intended to stagger regardless and didn't realize the hit uh, occurred. Immediate <laughs> ice rain. Ooh, catches out the creeping edge too. Says I'm not gonna. I don't need. I don't need to push my advantage too quickly, right? I can just send down the ice rain. Try and see what your response is because it's still really early on in the set. In the two sets potentially, I can gather some data because we didn't represent this a ton in the first set. See what you want to play with. Great up forward air shield by the way, uh, in order to block the JC there. Good challenge with the two B. Things are looking pretty decent here for two gigabyte. Using the force function in order to keep this combo going. Oh my goodness. Put him in the crystal, two puddles down. Oh, just the one? Yeah, just the one. Sets up the wheel as well, dashes him into there. And nice, popping the bomb at the same time as the thrower right there in order to cover for two options. And getting all the corner carry he could possibly want in the process. Gets the two bombs set up. Gets the cycle in his favor with the concentrate. Finds the hit with the bomb coverage. One apiece. I didn't even realize what he did. I'm not gonna lie, that bomb like Man's really got the tech, what can I say? Seriously, that really, that was a really good way of disguising uh, the animation uh, out there from Carmine. Yeah. Ooh, blocks the overhead on the Rekka, blocks low as well. 
That's plus a billion, I swear to God. That 6B is insanely Look, plus. man, if you're in cryo sleep, let's see how quickly you react. I mean, look, man, I, I never played like Fallout or none of those games. I, I don't know about the cryogenics here. What I do know right now is that this is a wildly good combo. Oh, my God. Put him in the crystal once more. He's set up a couple of puddles, yeah. and it's time to guess for game. It's not quite 200, but this is going to be more than enough meter to close out. You thought you were getting out? Nah, -uh. that's going to be my game, 1-0. And I really like Fox's going for the roll there. It didn't work out in this instance, but I think it's good to show. It's a little difficult to do against two gigabyte, just given the way that he's willing to like layer in a lot of hesitations. Yeah, there, there's Fox like a lot out. of overlapping active frames that make it very difficult to find the window you need to escape there. For sure. Here we go. Already fighting out of the corner. Really impressive. Like this is a a matchup where momentum matters a lot right mm -hmm. and if you can get out of the corner after the first interaction put you there it matters for a lot of the way the set's about to run yo i'm not gonna lie i think two gigabyte has fox's number on these defensive responses because he's been successfully calling out a ton of these whether it's a roll whether it's a force function whether it's an up back Oh, we're f we're still force functioning though, and I, I think that's genuinely important. I, I think so too. He was going for I think it was an empty assault on the approach to try and mix them up. But if you can represent that, it means again representing it early in the set it means I'm not afraid to throw it out. It means you have to care about the rest of the set. But two gigabit, not afraid of anything, not concerned whatsoever, simply winning. And I think that's a pretty apt descriptor for both players in certain ways. Fox, of, it's hard to describe him necessarily as belligerent, but he has a mode of operating and he will continue to stick to it unless you are properly shown him a ton of like options to beat that. Yeah, I'll care when I have to. It's more like, yeah, it's, it's like it's stubbornness almost. Ooh, I like that way to put it, yeah. Like Frozen up with the, yeah. with the flower again, wins the cycle handily. Probably going to win the next one as well. Ooh, oh, drops though? Drop is unfortunate. Green Shield ends up whiffing. Celestial. And this is certainly party time, or at least it would be, had it not been for that roll going so Ari here. Now, two gigabyte combo has a big life lead in order to overcome here. Probably not even going to bother with command grabs at this point due to just the health discrepancy being so high, at least in terms of... That was, that was a long concentrate. The threat of CS yep. is so important yep. because I genuinely think that that was like two gigabyte waiting for a CS to get popped and trying to play it calmly, and Fox was saying, all right, here you go. Let me just dash up throw real quick. Yeah, no I, I, I see my opportunity. Yeah, it's and, super, and, super good. Yeah, and again, got to represent it, right? If you if you know that, like, the layers are developing, then you got to be able to go back to layer one and just say, I'm going to do the belligerent thing. For sure. Catching with the uh, up uh, with the JAJC right here. Looking pretty good. Blocks the 4CC properly. Plus firms on the 2 3 6 and backs off. Yeah, I've got the double proc there from the... Puddles. Oh, stake plus with the yeah. wheel whip cancel. But the 236A ends up uh, blowing past some of the projectiles here. A couple of J3Bs really doing a good job of covering that space here. Yeah, he's boxing in two gigabits so well, right? Like using the aerials as a way to just say, I have the range to keep you exactly where I want you, converting into the IW with 5,400 damage. Takes us one apiece. I thought that was going to be 2-0. I, I really thought that was going to be 2-0. I, I genuinely, I was, I was getting, so, my brain was preparing the storyline of, it is now 2-0. It is the opposite of the last set. But now, yep. we're seeing these guys go neck and neck instead. Still different, perhaps the inverse, in fact. But things are looking pretty good for Fox of here. Flower is set, looking for a couple of shields. 5A mash doesn't end up going successfully for uh, for 2 gigabyte, and now they're getting cop of the J3B. Fox of starting to layer this option in once more north to like call out a couple of options. Uh, two gigabytes been opting to jump in a lot of places to get uh -huh. out of certain situations. So I think that like J3B is kind of designed to both cover that as well as threaten the ability to make it with. But good God, we will JC. Speaking of jumping out, there it is yet again. Just the situation's reversed. Catches something on there. Jumping out means two gigabit gets to run this again. Has the one puddle set down. Pops it. Chrysalis comes down. Give me them bomb sets. Charging up the cycle, does in fact win it off the back of that. Concentrate, 5A catches him trying to escape the corner and the Carmine special. One health is the only one that matters. And you could tell that he really wanted to be mindful of Fox's ability to both either dash out with an option or even just uh, or even just kind of like up for it with the way that those two A staggers were placed in order to just say, hey, I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking like kind of in the corner there. I thought that was really excellent. Yeah, absolutely.
think that was his excellent. 4,200 damage. Like, that, is, that is really, really solid. Dude, this character does mad damage, man. It's nuts. We're, we're, we're too touching out here. We haven't even seen an ice or an ender. It's kind of the nutty part about it. That's a great Green break. Shield. Yep, that will take Andre Kia up another round. We're tied up here. One round and a game each, as even as you could possibly ask it to be. Things are looking pretty solid here. A couple of whiffed green shields on Fox of N means that the cycle is better in favor of 2 gigabyte. Plus turns off the 623C. We're mashing right here on the J3B whiff. Nice stuff. Yeah, going for double rising J, uh, J buttons means that there's a lot of time there that you can try and say, okay, I, I, don't, I don't think this is real. And 2 gigabyte taking that opportunity. Baits out the force function reversal. I saw a green shield there, but didn't happen. Yeah, I think he backed Ooh. off there and didn't punish on the force function specifically because he was worried about Fox of uh, layering in the second part of it right. on the dash up right there. But the bomb didn't end up popping on time to even punish it. So kind of a, a bit of an awkward moment here. Oh, I think that CS was because the green shield lifted and Fox of panicked yep. a little bit. <laughs> also, it, look, it looked like 2 was trying to set up the fuzzy but didn't find Fox of flinching. Mm -hmm. Chain shift comes through, confirms it should absolutely be a kill if you can route into the IW with the freeze that should make it trivial wreaking every bit of damage out that he possibly can one more wreck for good measure iwex this is going to deal that added damage despite the scaling of the prior combo we don't have to deal with any sevo or nothing like that and that is certainly going to end it here fox is now up to one exactly and that was a very very uh confident way to end the round if you go in like you got a second to breathe when you had the animation popping if you're feeling good running in here trade coming through for these two and the dart comes through for the carmine to hold down that neutral i think that, that was the ic5c that ended up losing to the uh, icjc there it covers so much range too i do i swear to god man all right this should be a freeze let's see what oki fox have opt for most likely just going to set a flower here yeah Good throw is throw. tech yep gives them the opportunity to try and get their own pressure running pops the puddle pops second puddle Got another one to go. Yep, we're gonna set up inside the crystal, cover more space, back up just a little bit. Challenges the wheel and gets to tournament point off of it. A bold move from a bold player. That was insane. That was that was because the because the TK, I think it's like the TK wheel is not able to hit meaty in that um in that specific setup there. So you can opt to mash. Uh, I I am still absolutely bewildered by the five B mash, but I swear to God, Fox's mashes are just different. He just recognizes the situation so quickly, and, exactly. and has the kind of play for all of them. Mm. Ex command grab sets up one puddle, but the back tech means that the opportunity opens up for Fox up again. Oh no! Oh, no! Drops the combo and to spend meter for it too. Things are looking very, very different now. CS is available. They do have that to uh, they do have that option available to them. Let's see how it ends up playing out here. Pops the CS and then two gigabyte really playing well accordingly and deciding to just pop and then just moving back while meeting with the bomb in order to force Fox of into block stun here. And I mean they're still in the tournament, but how long though? Fox of opening up strong has 200 meter to work with. Head on green, but still early in the cycle. But another confirm means. Two gigabits down to a third, maybe a quarter health at the end of this combo. Oh my Send god. Send down the EX. Looking for one more touch is all they need. Wreck it comes through. Good defense. CS no to try and shields. keep things going. Trying to keep the plus frames. He Fox of really wants to force uh two gigabyte into making a decision. The 5A ends up connecting. It's the up for a JC that connects. This is going to be at least a hundred meter on hit, and that will most certainly kill as Fox of wins 3-1 against two gigabyte combo. Amazing set. Yeah, Boston Blue Beat offline number, whichever one it is. Uni 2 is going to be all Fox of all the time. You see Fox of 42, I'm thinking 100. Dude, he's, doing, he's, making, uh, he's making some plays, man. Uh, really lovely to see here. So, got a couple of things that we want to talk about before you know you guys leave and all that sort of jazz. Once again, I do want to do say, of course, congratulations to the players. Lovely to have them all around. The Uni folks that come around here are a wonderful bunch. So, Things that are happening on the Boston Blue Beat side of things. Well, if you like this monthly and see uh, how it's going on, our next monthly is on April 13th. We've got our regular titles like CF, Strive, Exert, Uni2, Sailor Moon S, Grand Blue, and more. Uh, and signups will be handled on site, and the doors open at 2 p.m. Earliest bracket's going to be at 4 p.m. You can check us on Twitter at Boston Blue Beat if you want any more of those details there. 
Uh, and don't forget, the stream is indeed powered by Junk Food Arcades, known for their snack box micros. These guys put out a lot of really interesting stuff, like the Swirl. I, I literally have a snack box micro in my bag right behind me right now. Yeah, my, it's great control. My girlfriend has a micro as well. So. <laughs> you, know, you know what else is great? Burst Limit Season 4 yeah. is still in full effect. We mentioned it before. We're going to mention it again. 10-week series ending in an invitational for all the people who have accrued all the points throughout the 10 weeks prior. That means the winner of that Invitational Tournament gets flown out to our regional tournament later on in the year beach episode here in Boston. It's going to be one for BBCF on Mondays. AC Plus R is on Tuesdays and Uni 2 on Wednesdays, all at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So come on out. It's been a lot of fun. You'll catch both of the two of us on there sooner rather than later, uh, either in chat or on the mic, or maybe even playing if we're, if we're feeling spicy. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, but yeah, just in general, we've got all that stuff going on. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. We are going to be transitioning into Strive momentarily. Uh, so uh, stay tuned.